next on Fox Sports Saturday at the races. Derby fever takes over. Three Kentucky Derby preps ahead that will book trips to Louisville for their winning connections. At Aqueduct, it's the long-awaited return of undefeated two-year-old Instagram. Will he stamp himself as a top derby contender with a win in the Gotham? Two-time Triple Crown winning trainer Bob Baffert is loaded with derby prospects. Much better looks to prove he deserves to be in that conversation. In the Tampa Bay Derby, this son of hat trick has certainly lived up to his name. Can win, win, win. Keep it up in his great at stakes debut. And at Oaklawn, Whitmore was one of the nation's top sprinters last year. And the Breeders' Cup sprint runner-up run them down in his 2019 debut. Fox Sports Saturday at the races is brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit americasbestracing.net today. Welcome to Fox Sports Saturday on the races here on Fox Sports 2. Great to have you with us. I'm Greg Wolf, top racing from all around the country. And of course, each and every Saturday here on the show, we bring you racing from around the country with a focus on qualifying for that first Friday and Saturday in May. The Kentucky Oaks, three preps coming up for the three-year-old Phillies and three key preps to get into the starting gate for the Kentucky Derby coming up on our show here this afternoon. With me, of course, Hall of Famer, three-time Kentucky Derby winner, Gary Stevens, former New York Met, L.A. Dodger, and four-time Major League All-Star, Paul LaDuca. Today in these preps, we have the return of one of the hottest prospects on the Derby Trail when he was a two-year-old Instagram shipping out east for his return in his three-year-old debut in the Gotham. Shipping out east off of this long layoff, and uh, I'll tell you what, I raced against him in his uh, last race as a two-year-old in the best pal. Thought I had him in my sights coming into the stretch, or at least it looked like I had him in, <laughs> in my sights for about uh, four or five strides right here. And Drayden Van Dyke was on him this day, and once he swapped into his left lead, it was race over. He looked like a four-year-old, he ran like a four-year-old. Let's see what he runs like today. Yeah, you're right. I mean, listen, the talent is obviously there. He's what you would call the first round pick if you were going to go to another sport. $1.2 million at the sale. He is not disappointed. Um, and I like the progression. Six furlongs to seven furlongs. Now they're going to go with the mile. I think that's what Jerry was thinking here with the Gotham, and then we'll see what happens from here. Two wins by more than 20 lengths combined. Little controversial. Hall of Fame trainer wanted to keep him training and going. Owner said, let's put him to the sidelines for a while. Come back in this spot. He's waited a while. We'll see if he can collect some of those points to get into that derby starting gate in the Gotham from New York. Weather conditions from around the country. Let's take a look. Aqueduct to Ozone Park. That is where the Gotham will be contested. 47 degrees. Mostly sunny this afternoon. We have the great three Tom Fool coming up there as well. Meanwhile, in Hot Springs, Arkansas, one of the top sprinters in the country back in action in Whitmore. 70 degrees and sunny out at Oaklawn Park. Tampa Bay Derby on the road to the Kentucky Derby with 85 quali qualifying points on the line. It is a beautiful day in Oldsmar, Florida, 82 degrees, mostly cloudy, and in Oaks Prep and Derby Prep. Now to Turfway Park in Florence, Kentucky, 47 degrees and a little bit of rain this afternoon. Get signed up, started. You can play all these races we're showing you this afternoon. And wherever you may be with the Naira Bets app, new members can earn a $200 new member sign-up bonus. Owner the promo code, enter the promo code live at sign up, bet 200, and you'll get 200 to bet any track anywhere, anytime. Go to NairaBets.com. Our race schedule and track conditions for this afternoon, it's brought to you by Windstar Farm, the farm that pays you back in New York, the Gotham on the road to the Derby. Fast conditions in Ozone Park. Grade three Honey Bee on the road to the Oaks for the three-year-old Phillies. Track upgraded from muddy to good at Oakland. Fast and firm at Tampa Bay and on synthetic out at Turfway. Let's check in in Ozone Park, New York, and visit with Andy Serling for the first time today. Andy. Thanks so much, Greg. Greg, it's really great to be here at Aqueduct today. It's a beautiful spring-like day. We've got four stakes on our card and some really exciting races, starting off with a couple of races for older horses, sprinting and going a mile. But the two big ones, the Gotham, a terrific race, as we talked about at the top of the show. The Busher, a sensational race to close out the action. But this Tom Fool, Skyler Scramjet, is going to come and try to become a dual winner of the Tom Fool. He won it last year in 19, 1918, and he actually, 2018, excuse me, going back a ways. 
Ducher actually finished second to him that day, and I think that Skylar Scramjet is the horse to beat today. His efforts this year, while both losers, were very good. He finished second to talented recruiting ready when unable to overcome that one. Speed edge in his return race off a six-month layoff. Then Toboggan going seven furlongs. He did all the dirty work up front. The winner came from dead last, and Skylar Scramjet ran very well to finish second. Today, he's got to deal with some other speeds, but he figures to probably let the five Bavaro and the seven fully vested go sit behind them, and he's run very well rating in the past, so I have no concerns about him sitting behind horses, and I think he is going to be favored by post time. He should be favored, and he's the horse to beat. But the two do, do share is a chance to beat him in here because he figures to get some pace to run into. He didn't run badly in the General George going seven furlongs last time at Laurel. I actually think he may be a better horse going six furlongs. And with the expected pace in here, he may be able to get his closing style in gear late and run down Skylar Scramjet and reserve, reverse that order of finish from last year. He didn't really have any trouble last time, but he made a sustained wide middle move. And those are the kind of moves that are better at six furlongs than seven furlongs. Well, spring is in the air. And things got a lot better around here when Maggie Wolfendale came back to town. She's standing track trackside. That's right, Andy. I couldn't have picked a better day to come back here to Aqueduct. The sun is shining, and that's always a good thing as we are fast here over this oval. And we'll pick up where you left off with number two in here. That is Du Cher, making his third start for the Mike Maker Barn. This is a horse that way back when got very good, especially around these parts, and does have an affinity for this Aqueduct uh, main track. I will say that he looks as good as he has in the past when he is running well. So as Andy alluded to, the fact that this guy might get the right kind of setup. Now we'll see what kind of setup number three Skylar Scramjet uh, gets here this time around. He is a horse that has shown the ability to rate and his trainer Michelle Nevin has said that she believes that he can sit behind a fast pace because let's face it we are likely at least on paper to see that here today in this Tom Fool as he looks to defend uh, his win from last year. I I'll be honest he was pretty quiet in the paddock but once he got out on track he kind of came alive and that's what I like to see from this horse. He does best when he gets on his toes and is sharp. And I like what I'm seeing from he has really filled out here, Greg. But they are latching on to the New York bred Syndergaard guys as he did warm up very well over the track. Maggie, thank you very much. Well, Syndergaard starting to look like the star he was as a two-year-old mm -hmm. in his last few starts. He was actually the favorite or was the favorite just a few moments ago, second choice on the board yeah, right now. Yeah, this is Deeper Waters. He's a New York bred, obviously named after the great pitcher for the Mets, Noah Syndergaard, and he was a very, very developed two-year-old. And I remember Maggie saying, listen, he's a good two-year-old. Stay away from him as a three-year-old. And she was right. He's gotten a lot better in the Terra Nova care. This is a different ball game here. I don't know if he should be second choice here at 5-2. Especially against open company. Well, and Skyler's uh, scramjet. Every time he comes off of this kind of layoff, you can look through his PPs. He, he runs lights yeah. out, and he's just solid. Never throws a bad one in there. Uh, could get loose on the lead, but he doesn't need the lead type. Mm -hmm. He can sit just off the pace if that's what's needed. Do share the two stepping into the gate with Raylu Gutierrez for Mike Maker. He's won three times on this track, and there is Skylar Scramjet. The defending champion trying to go back-to-back -back here in the grade three. Tom Foley, you're watching Fox Sports Saturday at the races. Here on Fox Sports 2, can Skylar Scramjet do it one more time with the Tom Fool John Imbriol with the call to kick things off here on this Saturday afternoon. Bon Raison goes in. Now we're just waiting on Fully Vested to complete the field for this grade three at Tom Fool at six furlongs. And they're all standing in line, just about set. And when it appeared the uh, front gate opened there, one of the horses now being closed. That was for number seven, fully vested. Once again, we're just about set for the start. And they're off. And Skyler's Scramjet came out first. Syndergaard is right there. And Bavaro is a close-up third with Fully Vested on the outside, racing in fourth. That is a gap of three lengths to a long shot, Bone Raison, followed by Duchair and Life in Shambles down at the rail. It's a three-way battle up front. Skyler's Scramjet, Syndergaard, 
and Bavaro. The opening quarter, 21 and four-fifth seconds. They're really going at it here as they go around the far turn. Skyler's Scramjet leads by ahead. Syndergaard is in between horses, and Bavaro is on the outside. Then it's a break of four to Du Cher, who's coming on and getting closer in fourth. Life in shambles down at the rail in fifth, then fully vested, and bone raison. The field comes off the turn and enters the stretch. Here's Bavaro on the outside. Skyler's Scramjet battles on. On Syndergaard and Duchere on the extreme outside is kicking in. Here is Duchere to take over the lead as they move for the 16th pole and Duchere is pouring it on here in the Tom Fool. Duchere, a much the best winner. He won by seven lengths. Life in Shambles came on for second. Then it was Bavaro at Skyler's Scramjet and the final time for the six furlongs. One minute, eight and three fifths seconds. A wicked pace up front. Ducher takes advantage, comes from off the pace under Ray Lou Gutierrez to get the win. He had to be licking his chops uh, coming into the back stretch, or going down the back stretch with the three horse duel in front of him, Andy. There's such a thing as getting a perfect trip and being lucky to win, but that wasn't the case with Ducher. Yes, he got a perfect trip, and you can really see the race setting up for him, the backstretch, but he won so easily that he was just much the best, and it's kind of a cool win for Ray Lou Gutierrez, guys, because he's losing his bug this weekend, and not a bad way to get Ray to become a journeyman. Yeah, and he's loaded the rest this afternoon as well, yeah. and... Uh, as I said, sitting back there, licking his chops, three-horse duel. Johnny Velasquez, he didn't want to, uh, Dylan Davis and Skyler's scramjet getting away. He got a flyer at the start, but uh, Johnny attacked the five-horse with Junior Alvarado. He attacked as well, and Ray Lou was sitting back there and yeah. picked up the pieces. But Varo, Varo won, won the fight. He lost the war. I mean, he, he, he would really battle his tail off to run third in this race. But Andy's right when, when it comes to Duchere. Uh, good racehorse time here, too. 108 and change here. They ran pretty fast. You know, Gary. And back to Bavaro. I mean, he's, this was a big class test for him, and he stood up to these horses, even though he wound up third in the end. That was a very, very wicked pace up front. 2 1 5 finish. Do share at 5 to 1, Andy. Yeah, I want to ask Gary a question. You know, Skyler's Scramjet, and we talked about it beforehand. I think Michelle Nev and Dylan Davis probably wanted to rate. But when you have that nice high position, you break as sharply as he did. Are you in one of those positions when you're sort of damned if you do and damned if you don't? Hey, absolutely. Uh, you've got to call audibles. And when you get a flyer like he got at the start of this race, obviously, uh, Dylan Davis been around long enough. He's a seasoned veteran now. His dad rode for years. You take advantage of that. Johnny knows what's going on just to his outside. He's not going to allow that because he was going to be running for second if he allows Skylar Scramjet to go. So you're 100% right. Uh, you got to call an audible at that point when you get a flyer like Dylan did. Two, one, five, three, do share at five to one. And the great three, Tom Fool, you mentioned Ray Lou Gutierrez with a big day ahead. He'll be on Not That Brady, who just missed in the Withers later on in the Gotham. Still ahead, Derby qualifying points on the line. Well defined with Gate to Wire and the Sam F. Davis. Can he do it again in the Tampa Bay Derby? And Bob Baffert unleashes yet another Derby contender. Will much better prove he's Derby worthy in the war front has sired. Warfront has sired eight champions and ten millionaires. Recent grade one winners include Holmesman, Fog of War, Lancaster Bomber, and European champion U.S. Navy flag. Plus 2019 Kentucky Derby hopeful War of Will. He's also sire of the highest price yearling sold in North America in 2018. An international super sire on all surfaces and all fronts. Warfront, standing at Claiborne Fox. No sport in the world brings the winds home like racing. It's one of a kind, high speed, high stakes action. And Naira Bets takes you there. Place your bets and watch the races live from anywhere. With Naira Bets, make easy, secure deposits in promotions every day to earn reward points or cash. Download the Naira Bets app or visit NairaBets.com. Sign up now for a $200 new member bonus with promo code LIVE at NairaBets.com.
was hoping when we entered this horse in the sale that I would come up here and uh, be in my name's happy and have the first uh, run happy that hit it out of the park. We're ecstatic about it. He's just a natural athlete. He's got length. He's got good substance to him. He's very correct. He's got a very free, effortless walk. Very intelligent, good mind. This is the horse we brought here to make a sound. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. We're back on Fox Sports Saturday at the races. Earlier this week, as has been widely reported in an unprecedented move, Santa Anita indefinitely suspended racing while they do extensive testing and analysis of the track. It was announced the track would not be reopened until it was deemed safe for both horses and riders. Here to discuss the latest developments, the chief operating officer of the Stronach Group, the parent group of Santa Anita, Tim Ritvo. Tim, thanks for stopping by to talk about this with us. What is the latest update on the track and when might racing resume here at Santa Anita? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, the, uh, we've been training on the training track the last couple mornings without any incident. We'll be having workouts on Monday morning on the training track with permission from the racing secretary. The main track will open up on Monday for joggers and gallopers. And if, um, if everything goes well and uh, we allow breezing on the weekend, uh, we'd be looking at a resuming on the 22nd next Friday. When racing does resume, what new measures will be put in place? So there've already been a lot of protocols in place, but we're going to really ramp them up with the a new we're going to hire a new position of director of equine welfare. It's very important. We're going to use um, things that we've done at other jurisdictions have been successful with veterinarian records being transferred from trainer to owner and owner to trainer uh, based on where the horses go. So do people have an, a little bit of an undertaking on what was going on with that horse before he was claimed? So those things are really important and there will be extra um, vet presence uh, on examinations before the races. Today obviously was expected to be a very big day at the racetrack. Big Cap, San Felipe, what's the status of those two races? Yeah, first of all, the San Felipe, we're, we're really sorry, right? We had to lose a race like that. It's a triple crown race and on the trails, but because of scheduling for these three-year-old programs, we will lose that race, but we will bring back the Big Cap on Santa Anita Derby Day. Uh, may lose a horse or two over to Dubai, but uh, maybe we'll have a bigger field if we lose one of those two, two horses. But um, we're, we're excited to get back started, obviously a little bit nervous, and everybody is just doing the best they can. We're all working in this together. Tim Ritvo, CLO of the Stronic Group, thank you very much for the update. We appreciate it. Several of those horses that were planning to run in the San Felipe, they've been rerouted to the Rebel Stakes. We will have that on our show next week. We'll talk more about the scenarios for that race. Could be split divisions a little bit later on. Right now, we send it to Andy Serling in New York. Thanks a lot, Greg, and obviously a very happy Winter Circle celebration. Mike Maker, the trainer, getting the win. Ray Lou Gutierrez getting a very, very exciting win for him as he gets out, gets set to close out his career as a bug rider, but has a big career ahead of him. As a journeyman rider, 1280 on due share. Life in shambles, picking up pieces for second. Bavaro did a nice job to hold on for third after he chased that wicked pace. Almost $40 for the exacta for a dollar. The stymie's coming up. The first of three races at a flat mile around one turn at Aqueduct. The 2017 winner, Sunny Ridge, it's big price now, but Probably be favored by post time. Early money, though, for Vino Rosso, last year's hero of the Wood Memorial. But plenty of action from around the country. We head out to Nancy Holtis at Oakland Park. for beautiful skies this afternoon. Temps in the low 70s. Nancy Holtis here at Oaklawn Park in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Two stakes make up the card as Whitmore returns off a runner-up finish in the Breeders' Cup Sprint, and he looks for his third straight win in the $150,000 Hot Springs. And three-year-old Phillies compete in the $200,000 Grade 3 Honeybee. 85 total points are on the line towards the first Friday in May in the Kentucky Oaks. Lafitte, how's it looking in Tampa? A picture perfect conditions here, Nancy, uh, at Tampa Bay Downs, where they call this Festival Day, Tampa Bay Derby Saturday. Now, the Tampa Bay Derby is a Kentucky Derby prep race, grade two with a $400,000 purse, but this isn't about the money, it's about the points. Kentucky Derby points, 85 of them available, just like in the Gotham, 50 to the winner, essentially guaranteeing that horse a spot in the Kentucky Derby starting gate. And while win, win, win is the favorite, well-defined is a strong second choice. Impressive winner of the local prep, the Sam Davis here four weeks ago. 
He's trained by Kathleen O'Connell. I'm not going to say she's an underrated trainer. Let's just say she's one of the best kept secrets in the sport outside of the industry, guys. Certainly she is. Well to find was stellar and that Sam F. Davis could get a little more pace pressure up front. Win, win, win. Morning line favorite in this race. Certainly one of the key players as well. This horse is going to be trying two turns for the first time. Ultra impressive in that Pasco win. Set a track record that day at seven furlongs. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we talk about uh, well-defined. I don't know who he's going to get pace pressure from, but every time he has been hooked or has not made the lead, the result hasn't been what it was in the Sam F. Davis. Yeah, and when you look at the seven win, win, win at five to two, has never been around two turns, but the progression's been pretty good. And here's a horse in the sun by hat trick, a Japan uh, a bred horse that was actually scheduled to be on turf in his debut. And boom, you get this lightning race, and now you're getting derby dreams here. Now, if this horse is be able to maybe pass the test of going around two turns, listen, when you beat a group by seven and a quarter lengths over the same racetrack, you're going to pretty probably be pretty tough to, to handle today. And I would think he'll be up close enough to be in a good enough position to be right there at home. We'll see if he has the stamina. Kind of got off a step slow in that race, too, and he yeah. still won by more than seven lengths, setting a track record that day. Here's a look at the Derby prep schedule for this afternoon. Grade three, Gotham with 85 points on the line to the top four finishers. Same as the case in the Tampa Bay Derby and the Jeff Ruby stakes on synthetic. 34 points on the line, 20 points to the winner of that race out at Turfway Park. You see those points sometimes, uh, Gary, and sometimes you look to yourself, hey, I know I can't win this race, but if I can suck up second or third, I can know I can get some points in here and maybe get 20 or 15. Oh, absolutely. Or ride the race it, that way is what Yeah, I'm I mean, it's always on your mind, and yeah. you know throughout the race where you're sitting, how much ammo you've got underneath, and sometimes you just concede and say, all right, I've got to go for second or third right yeah. now because those points are very important. Look at the Kentucky Derby leaderboard. It is still war of will. has been sensational. Out at the fairgrounds with wins in the helicopter, risen star top of that list. Of course, game winner and probable, both undefeated for Bob Baffert. We're looking at the San Felipe. They're going to be most likely rerouted to the Rebel, which we'll have on our show next weekend. Post parade out at Tampa Bay for the great two Hillsboro. Phantom opening sent out by Jordan Blair. Yeah, first time in Jordan's barn. Winner last time out with... Antonio Galaro, and he's going to uh, join. This horse was 30 to 1 on the line, all the way down to 6 to 1. Hawksmore was supposed to be retired after the Great Three Endeavor win, ran so good, came back wanting to do more. So now this will be one more chance in the retirement coming after this race. Yeah, he changed his tactics, too. He, he's somewhat of a horse as a front runner. Last time he came from off the uh, pace, it was a good ride by Castellano. Viva Vegas, three time winner on this turf course. Was behind Hawksmore last time, needs to improve a little bit. Nepali Spirit, been first or second in 13 of 22 lifetime starts. She's a kind of horse that really brings her game uh, uh, most of the time. Three out of five in the try there at Tampa. Peach of a gal sent out by trainer Graham Motion. Kind of like our host, Greg Wolf, Peach of a guy. Oh, thank you, pal. Winner uh, on the turf at Tampa in the past, actually where they broke her maiden daughter of curling. Street with no name, 78 to 1 in the Endeavor last time out, ran behind Oxmoor in Viva Vegas. And it wasn't that bad, right? She's 67 to 1 today. She's only four and a half lengths. Maybe try to throw her on the back end of your super. Rimska sent out by Chad Brown. He'll send out a pair in this race. Yeah, and this is the one maybe I'd be against, especially at 8 to 5. Listen, she lost 20 cents on the dollar. I know Valedictorian's a nice mare, but maybe not at 8 to 5. On the moon again, another Chad Brown runner. She's going to be making her five-year-old debut. She got beaten by her own stablemate and four-star crook last time. She might have hit the lead a little too soon. I think she's the, the, the mare to beat in here. Get explicit, sent out by Barbara Minshaw. Florent Giroux rides. When Barbara's won some big races in her time. Flo the jockey will be on board. You know, last time sat in really uh, a weird position and sort of backed out of it. And good year for Roses, former grade two winner of the Santa Ana, second off more than a year's layoff. Ex-California horse for Richard Baltus needed that last race. That's your field for the grade two Hillsboro mile and an eighth on the turf at Tampa. Let's send it back out to Lafitte Pinkai. Well, Greg, uh, saying goodbye is never easy. And today, as you mentioned, we're going to say goodbye to a terrific race mare. Hawksmore, the six-year-old making her 24th and final career start here. So what's next for Hawksmoor? Well, 
she's going to be a mom and uh, is already has a date with a champion. Going to be bred to terrific stallion. Kitten's joy is Hawksmoor, but one more race remains. Here she is trying to become just the sixth mare ever to sweep both of Tampa's graded stakes races for fillies and mares on grass. The most recent, you might have heard of her, Teppin, the 2015 Breeders' Cup mile winner, a turf female champion, and of course she won that big race across the pond at Royal Ascot in the Queen Anne. So today, Hawksmoor, you guys touched on strategy. Yes, yeah, she won the endeavor from off the pace. No pace or a not a lot of pace in this race. I think she's going to be much more forwardly placed. But if Hawksmoor is going to win, she's going to have to deal with those two Chad Brown trained fillies, starting with Rimska. You guys touched on the fact she was the defeated favorite in the Swanee River. She was a 20 cents on the dollar on that particular afternoon. So Irad Ortiz was criticized for the ride to a certain extent. We can, from time to time, even criticize Eclipse Award winning jockeys. The idea was that he had her too far back. He waited too long, leaving her too much to do. Interesting to see today if Ortiz has her either closer to the pace or moves a little bit sooner. Could be a big day for Ortiz, Rimska here, Lefebvre in the Florida Oaks, and of course, win, win, win in the Tampa Bay Derby. But that is not the only Chad Brown trainee on the moon again. Number eight, currently three to one. Now she was defeated in three consecutive races in North America last year, but I think you could excuse each start, whether it was traffic, whether it was pace, whatever the case was, there were excuses and you didn't think you were manufacturing excuses. You know she has a class. Second to that terrific New York bred mare, four-star crook in the grade one flower bowl out at Belmont Park. She's good. She's going to be a serious factor. And one final note on Brown, who's won this race three of the last seven years. Two of those fillies, Zagora in 2012, Stephanie's kit in 2015, went on to capture the Readers' Cup Philly Mare turf, guys. Lafitte, thank you. Well, back to Hawksmoor, who is at 3-1 to one on the board right now. Arno De La Cor, her trainer, has probably seen enough of Chad Brown. She had been 0-9 for 9 winless streak until she broke through in that endeavor. Six of those losses came against Chad Brown trained Phillies. <laughs> That's crazy. And he's got to face two more this afternoon. Yeah, Uni, Rimska, Sister Charlie. Wow, I didn't even realize that. But, yeah, she's had an amazing career, and this is going to be her her last race. And pretty good date with Kitten's Joy. That looks like that's going to be a nice little turf horse. Yeah, it uh, makes a lot of sense to, <laughs> right? to go to the champ, uh, Kitten's Joy, here. I'm going to get back, touch on real quick about the criticism that I, Rad Ortiz, got last time. Will he stay closer to the page? You know what? He's riding a wave of confidence right now. You don't worry about the criticism. You go back, you ride the next race, you get legged up. Once again, he's legged up back on Rimsky. He's going to go out, ride his race. He'll, he'll come out of this... Uh, center field shoot here, find out what position he is, save ground around that first turn, and then sort things out from there. But I think he's got to beat mm. the, the little brother next door to him. The best thing for a professional athlete, short-term memory. Chad Brown will try and get the best of Hawksmoor one final time with a seven Rimska and the eight on the moon again. Can Hawksmoor, breaking from post two, go out a winner? Here's Richard Grunder with the Hillsborough. Edition of the Graded Hillsborough. Moving up on the outside, good year for Roses is away alertly and reaching up for their lead, and there's Hawksmoor. Now emerging with the lead toward the rail is Phantom opening. Also away with the top flight is the favorite Rimska, and the last horse away get explicit as they've been through the stretch for the first time. The six-year-old Hawksmoor making her final start of her fabulous career shows the way now by three. Phantom opening, drop, Phantom opening drop, drops over to the rail and now has the lead. Remsky in a good spot now, racing along third. Then we go back to Viva Vegas, also with a ground saving trip down along the inner rail fourth. Up on the outside, Get Explicit is now racing along fifth. Good year for Roses. They're sixth. Then it's two lengths farther back. Peach of a Gal is now seventh. Then we go back to Nepali Spirit, racing along eighth. On the moon again, up on the outside is ninth and two and a half lengths farther back to Street with a no name, but as they turn up the back stretch, back stretch, Hawksmoor bumps the margin now to four. Phantom opening is now on the chase second. Then it's two and a half lengths farther back. Remska is inching up a closer third down along the inner rail. Up on the outside, Goodyear for Roses. Then we go back to Viva Vegas. She now gets the wake up call. She'll need racing room along the rail. As they swing around the far turn, Hawksmoor and Joe Bravo trying to take them start to finish. Phantom opening. Gallardo now sets her down for the drive second. Remska will have to work out a trip from the inside. 
on the moon again. Swings to the center of the racetrack, and now they cut to the wire. Hawksmore is still the target. Phantom opening up on the outside. Rimska looks for a seam and now finds it, and she's exploding late. Down to the wire, Hawksmore. Here comes Rimska with a powerful surge, running down the six-year-old mare. In front and going away, Hawksmore might have hung on for a second. Over. On the moon again, and the running time on the board, 1.49. Chad Brown does it to Hawksmore for a seventh time since she's come to the States as Rimska gets up for the win in the Hillsboro. And a good read by Lafitte Pinkai. The race was won, believe it or not, in the first 100 yards of this race. Uh, Irad Ortiz getting Rimska away from there, getting a, a great position, laying third, saves all the ground around the final turn, gets out, gets through at the 316th mm -hmm. and uh, got first run. Perfect ride, yeah, you're right. And much the best here. And on the moon again, I think might have ripped Hawksmore for second here. And it might be Chad Brown here, one, two. What ended up happening is on the moon again, had to take the overland route, but Rimska was just sitting in that beautiful spot. And another good call there by Lafitte because he was right. I thought Joe Bravo was very heady putting Hawksmore in the lead. Let's take a shot and see what happens. And she almost gutted it out. We'll make it official for you in just a moment. It is Rimska with the win, very likely on the moon again for a Chad Brown exact as we take one more look. No, nope. no, it's closed. Looks like it was inside. Held Osmar on. Osmar held yeah. on yeah. for a second. Back to New York and the stymie coming up. Purse of $150,000. Vino Rosso back in action. Haven't seen him since the Travers last summer at Saratoga. Competed in the Kentucky Derby in the Belmont against Justify last summer. As we take a look at our post parade, we start with Curlin's Honor, trained by Mark Cassie. Yeah, good second last time in the Ontario Derby. This horse has done some good work over all different surfaces, so a tough read. Sunny Ridge, morning line favorite sent out by Jason Service. Probably the one to beat on numbers. She doesn't, or he doesn't, love Aqueduct, and he hasn't won in a little while. Mike Maker looking to go back to back, and he has a speedster in California night with Kendrick Carmouche. And back to back wins, dropped him down to the claiming level, and it seems like it's given him a little confidence. Stan the man, he's the now horse in the Naira circuit for John Terranova. He's won two in a row. Yeah, and those two wins, again, gate to wire, but you're right, he is on the improve. Steve Asmussen sends out title ready. He's coming off a defeat against Sunny Ridge. He finished second in that jazzle. Yeah, you know, his mile in eighth race in the Discovery was good. His last race, maybe he's just sort of flattened out a little bit. I wonder if they sit back and make a one run today. Class test for Heroes Welcome, sent out by Gary Contessa. Yeah, favorite last time needs to improve after our starter allowance. Jerry Hollendorfer, who will have Instagram later in the Gotham. Here's Shiver Me Timbers from the same barn. Yeah, a horse that's going to be coming from way out of it. I would think maybe... Uh, 12 to 1 is a decent price. And former Wood Memorial winner, Vino Rosso. Well, listen, do you want to take the 8 to 5? The horse is 2 for 2 over the Aqueduct Strip. Still to come, Stan the Man looks to make it three in a row. Can he keep his streak alive? Next. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better. And America's Best Racing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle. The best races, horses, and destination venues. Cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. America's Best Racing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. The Kentucky Derby is a race that we all want to capture. But what he did in the Florida Derby, that got me great. But inside the 16th pole, the 2017 Florida Derby to Todd Pletcher. And always dreaming, they won it by four in the end. Anytime you ever would go to see him in his breezes or in his races, you knew that he was the real deal. You really would get excited about what he was going to do for the future. I'm Jacob West, and this season, I'm always dreaming.
welcome back. You're watching Fox Sports Saturday at the races. Races as we are approaching post time for today's Stymie. And as you saw, Run Happy One, looking forward to seeing his babies uh, coming around this year as he continues to stand at Claiborne Farm for 25000 But I want to look at a few horses coming back off of layoffs. And one of them happens to be your current favorite on the outside. That is Vino Rosso for trainer Todd Pletcher. Now, it's been 11 months since he has won a race, and this was the very spot in which he did so in last year's Wood Memorial as a three-year-old. Then, well, his three-year-old form after that got a little bit on the spotty side, and so we haven't seen him since running a disappointing fifth in the Travers, but has the time away done this horse well? He looks so much more athletic, so together. You couldn't ask a horse to look more fit than what Todd Pletcher has him looking, coming back, going this mile here in today's Stymie, in which this is a spot in which Todd Pledger does seem to excel at. And I really like what I'm seeing, though. You're taking the worst of it at six to five. Now, a much bigger price on the inside is number one, Curlin's Honor. He's another one coming back off of a layoff in which he looks ready to rock and roll as well. These horses, both of which look as though they just ran maybe two, three weeks ago as opposed to uh, four to six months ago. Uh, and Curlin's Honor, yes, he might be a little bit more proficient on a different surface. Surface, but physically, I can't fault him for getting on uh, this Aqueduct main track. He looks strong. He looks like a horse very well suited to this one turn mile uh, as well for Mark Cassie. Very intrigued by these horses coming back and making their four year old debuts. But Andy, how do you feel as those st they stack up against some older horses sh such as Stan the Man and Sunny Ridge? I think Stunny Ridge is the horse to beat Maggie, and also even though he's second choice right now at five to two, and the outside horse Vino Rosso is set to two, probably at post time Sunny Ridge will be favored. Still a lot of money to come in. Sunny Ridge, if you look at his last five races, he has triple digit buyers in three of them, and much lower numbers in two of them. What those three races with the big figures have in common is they're all one-turn races like today's race. He's a horse that's better around one turn than two turns. Sometimes he's just good enough to win around two turns. Last time out, he was forced to chase three wide against the talented Mr. Buff, who's heading to a stake in New Orleans, who rode the gold rail, and he was wide against the rail. He is the horse to beat, and he has the speed to be a little closer than Vino Rosso, who could be pace compromised. Not that he's impossible. Maybe he's a one-turn horse. I think the five title ready is a long shot with a chance in this race. He, too, was compromised by a wide trip last time out in the Jazzle against the gold rail. And he's an improving horse for the Steve Asperson barn. Their trainer, the assistant trainer, Toby Sheets, does a great job here in the winter. So I think if you're looking for a long shot, title ready is a horse that could maybe get into the number. Stan the man. He's a horse who definitely has a chance, and he can be forwardly placed. There does not project to be an inordinate amount of speed in today's stymie. California Knight's probably going to go to the lead. He's owned by Three Diamonds Farm, who just upset our Tom Fool with due share. But California Knight is just not good enough. Stan the Man could be very forwardly placed to his advantage, Greg. Andy, what are your thoughts on Vino Rosso? We haven't seen him since the Travers last summer, last year's Wood Memorial winner. What do you make of him off the bench? He's 8-5 to five right now. You know, he can win this race for sure. He's obviously run some good race at 3-year-old, and naturally he could improve as a 4-year-old. The problem is that he doesn't have any speed, and this could be a race that has a fairly moderate pace, and that could work against his best chances. I won't be surprised if he improves, and maybe this horse who's been doing okay in those two-turn races will be better around one turn. He did break his maiden aqueduct to seven furlongs around one turn. I just think you're taking the worst of it at a short price because of the pace dynamic. Very short price, guys, as they load up eight to five as Vino Rosso makes his four-year-old return. I like the eight to five. I think he might be a one-turn miler. They may have been trying to stretch him further, m messing with his uh, style a little bit last mm -hmm. year, but I think he's a Met mile type horse. And they're off. Vino Rosso away well from the outside. Now Stan the Man moves up along with a California Knight. Hero's welcome is right there as they race up the chute. It is California Knight with a narrow lead. Heroes Welcome is running in second. In between those two is Stan the Man in third and Vino Russo on the extreme outside in fourth. Curlin's Honor rides the rails in fifth. Sunny Ridge is alongside in sixth. Title Ready runs seventh. And Shiver Me Timbers is the trailer in eighth after an opening quarter mile in 23 and one-fifth seconds. And it is long shot California Knight with the lead here by three-quarters of a length. Stan the Man in second. 
Then it's Heroes Welcome three wide, and Vino Rosso is four wide. Just in behind the front four is Curlin's Honor down at the rail in fifth. Then Sunny Ridge, and on the outside, Title Ready now moves up a spot. Shiver Me Timbers continues to trail the half. Strong, 45 and 4 fifth seconds. Midway on the turn now. Stand the man in between horses. Vino Russo on the outside. California Knight down at the rail. And here comes Title Ready now to join the front runners. And Sunny Ridge follows that move. Three quarters in 110. The field is in the stretch. Here's Title Ready on the outside of Vino Russo. It's Title Ready with the lead. Vino Russo battles on with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Vino Russo coming back on the inside of Title Ready. It's Vino Russo and Title Ready. And Vino Russo is prevailing here in deep stretch. We haven't seen him since the Travers. He comes back to win the stymie under Johnny Velasquez. Title Ready was second, then a big break. Back to Shiver Me Timbers and Sunny Ridge. How about that for a return to the races? Vino Rosso, last year's Wood Memorial winner off the bench, wins his four-year-old debut. And what you have to really like about this performance was not only his gameness and obviously winning a race like this in a tough race off a layoff, but he had so much more speed today. I was wrong. The pace was very honest in this race, just under 46 and a half, and Vino Rosso was right on top of it. This was an excellent effort, and he feels like a much improved four-year-old. Gary may have made a very prescient call on this one. Andy, I, I just look back in his form, a maiden breaker there at Aqueduct last year going seven-eighths of a mile. They didn't go quite as quick uh, the first quarter. Actually, they did the exact same time as when breaking the maiden. He was three lengths off the lead that day in breaking his maiden. So I think the speed was there. They knew he had quality. And just knowing Todd Pletcher, liking those triple crown races, the Travers included, maybe monkey him with his style a little bit last year, trying to take back, save something for the unknowing that he wasn't a true distance, say, mile and a quarter type of horse. This is what this horse wants to do right here. He'll get a little further than a mile, but that mile speed he just showed and the finish right there and the guts he showed getting headed and coming back, that's class right there. Yeah, I, I agree. Because here's the thing, title ready, be coming out of mile and eighth races, and he's not a hanger at all. And for Vino Rosso to sort of come back and to put him away showed a little bit more guts because you probably know that Todd didn't have him completely cranked, so he beat a pretty good horse here. Vino Rosso with a win, 8-5-7 to finish. Stan the man, not today, finishes off the board this afternoon as that win streak comes to an end back at Tampa Bay in the Great Two Hillsboro. Hawksmore, unfortunately, not able to go out a winner, but valiant in defeat in the final start of her career as Rimska for Chad Brown gets the win with Irad Ortiz Jr. Yeah, and set the perfect trip under Irad, and he makes redemption today. Hawksmore did all the dirty work in front. Joe Bravo, Jersey Joe trying to be sneaky there. It almost pulled it off a great run in her finale. And that's the best part about this game. We'll be waiting in hopefully two to three years to see a baby by Hawksmore and Kittens Joy. Florida Oaks, great three coming up, mile and the 16th on the turf, purse of $200,000. Coming up next, and Rusty Arnold will send out Cron Concrete Rose, one of the first two starts of her career, including a grade two at Keeneland, before trying the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. Yeah, and this will kick off your cross country pick five today, and it's all over the place. You got three different tracks. You can go to Tampa, it starts race number 10. You gotta go to Aqueduct, back to Tampa, back to Aqueduct, and wait a second, we're gonna send you to Hot Springs for race number nine. Pretty cool bet here. And get on to Naira.com um, and just flash cross country. I got a ticket, baby. And there it is, one, three, five, seven, ten. I'm gonna start here in this race. I, listen, I, I get it. Lafayette is the horse to beat for Chad Brown. Um, and listen, you gotta use a lot of Chad's horses. Three, five, six in race number 10 in the Gotham. Mind control, uh, Hakal, and I'm gonna use Instagram. I, I get it, Instagram's a horse to beat. Let's get all the way to Oakland race nine because this horse is my best bet of the day. It is power gal um, for Mark Cassie and David Cohen. This horse had some brutal trips, but last time was really giant. First time going around two turns in the Martha Washington, and I think it's gonna be a handful in the Honey Bee later on today. She's currently 12th on the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard with 10 points. We'll see if she can Collect a few more in that Kentucky Oaks prep coming up a little bit later on. That is the cross-country pick five. I want to remind you, 
We want to hear from you. You can use the hashtag ABR at the races. Show us your winning tickets, your big scores. Show us your time with friends at the racetrack. Anything. Connect with Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Again, use that hashtag ABR at the races and share your time with everyone at the races during our time here on Fox Sports 2. Question from America's Best Racing this afternoon. What's your favorite thing to do when you're at the track? Handicap races and bet. See how the horses, see the horses up close. Socialize, eat and drink, take photos and videos. How about all the above? It's true. You be better. Hold on. See the horses up close. Yeah, you do. You That's an all. I, it is usually, an all. I usually can't socialize with Paul and uh, eat and drink because he's usually at the windows. <laughs> I can't find him. Where'd Paul go? <laughs> And then Gary's usually taking photos and videos with all his fans, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. we got it all covered. <laughs> all right, so again, make your voice heard. Hashtag ABR at the races. A lot more coming up. Still three Kentucky Derby preps on the way. And, of course, with what happened here, the cancellation of racing, no San Felipe, a couple of horses uh, we know at least uh, at a minimum going to be rerouted to Arkansas mm -hmm. for that Rebel Stakes. They're looking at having split divisions of that Kentucky Derby prep race next weekend. And if Bob Baffert does send out his two undefeateds, very, very likely they would be in separate divisions of that race. Common ownership, common trainers, they're going to try and split them up in those two divisions. Right. I think the thing that uh, you have to worry about, you never want any setbacks from January all the way through the Kentucky Derby leading them over there. Is this a type of setback? It's not an injury. It's not anything like that. But uh, these horses now have had to be transported to Los Alamitos, so they'll have their final works tomorrow morning for Bob Baffert before they get on that plane going back to Oakland. So things not going exactly according to plan, and uh, you just wonder how that's going to affect these two horses shipping across country now when they were ready to run today. Yeah, and it's like any other athlete. You had a routine. I had a routine when I played, and you don't want that routine to get broken, just like a horse. A horse knows when he's... When the tack gets put on him, when he puffs up and he's ready to run, he knows it in the morning. They're smarter than you think. They are athletes, and you don't want to ruin up the, uh, excuse me, uh, mess up their routine, just like any other uh, uh, athlete. Because then that routine starts getting into your head a little bit, and then it gets into the trainer's head a little bit, it gets in the owner's head a little bit. Where are we going? This and that. So yes, Gary is right. We had this issue at fairgrounds like four or five years ago when when they were missing training and guys had to go places, so guys are going to have to get creative, and the horses are going to have to be tough. Time so compacted, too, trying to get into the field for the Kentucky Derby for both your Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, game winner, and for Improbable, both undefeated. This was going to be their first start of their three-year-old season, so any time lost is huge. We'll see them both likely next week pending a workout that comes tomorrow at Los Alamitos. Meanwhile, back in New York. Vino Rosso, Wood Memorial winner from last year, may have come back even better now as a four-year-old. Yeah, and I told, told Paul at the half-mile pole, Johnny just took one of those mm -hmm. uh, peaks between his legs at the half-mile pole. It was a confident peak, and um, he knew what he was doing. It looked like he was uh, he was in for some trouble at the quarter pole yeah. when a five-horse come up on his outside, but... Uh, he had plenty, plenty of heart and uh, plenty of run left that's, in him. That's what impressed me, Gary. really did because he's coming off a layoff. I get it. Vino Rosso has got that, you know, class, and you even said it. But Tyler Reddy is coming out of that mile and eighth race, showing finish. Looked like he was going to go right on by. When he hit Vino Rosso, Vino Rosso showed that fight. And, yeah, these are the same connections that also took a picture we're always dreaming. And Mr. Rapoli decided to join in with Vino Rosso. I, I'm not a huge stat guy, but one of the stats I looked at just before they were going into the gate was Todd Fletcher off of a 185-day layoff. He only hits at 30%. Not bad, that, right? That's crazy. <laughs> so Horace, too, remember, he was a morning glory. He was so good. I always thought they had, he had so much potential. He was grew up on the farm with Justify. Although it was Justify, he was always the main man from day he one. He was kind of the buzz horse on Derby, in Derby yeah. weekend. He was. You ready to head down the Derby Trail? Grade 3 Gotham. Points on the line. 85 total, 50 to the winner, which means win and you're in for the Grade 3 Gotham. And it is the return of Instagram, who won his two starts as a two-year-old by more than 20 lengths combined. A little bit controversially sent to the sidelines, to the farm, to wait to come back until now. We have not seen him for almost six months. Jerry Hollendorfer talked about what will be key for him and why he shipped east for his return. 
Well, we weren't trying to avoid anybody, but uh, once we discussed uh, possible races, then it was decided that uh, a one-turn mile might be better for a horse coming off a long layoff, and, uh, you know, he certainly trained up well well enough uh, to do that. Well, off of uh, his blowout uh, the other day, a nice, uh, real nice half a mile and, and good gallop out. We feel confident that we have him ready, so uh, if he's good enough, and we think he might be, then uh, we might have a chance to win. Well, Jerry Hollendorfer, he's a Hall of Fame trainer. He wanted to keep this horse going after how good he'd been doing. The owner, however, of uh, OXO Equine said, let's put him away. We know what he can do. We know he's a superstar. Let's wait, save him for one of the bigger races, obviously the Kentucky Derby that they hope to qualify for here this afternoon. What do you think about him and his return? That's asking a lot. Long layoff going to a new racetrack, and now stretching out as well. I, I'm thinking of it uh, like it was a two-year-old, like he started out last year. He, he was so impressive breaking his maiden, and he stepped up to seven-eighths, uh, second out of his life, his only uh, other race of his lifetime, and did not have a problem. He's only got another furlong co to go today. He was so impressive as, at that seven-eighths. No doubt in my mind that he'll get the mile. And Jerry, he can prepare one off of these layoffs mm -hmm. like no other, like a Todd Pletcher. There's a reason he's in the Hall of Fame. So I think this Colt's ready today. We saw him, Paul, in the lead in both of those victories as well. But Hollendorfer seems to believe if needed, he could rate as well. Yeah, I, I don't think Jerry even knows what he has underneath him. And, and, and the reason why maybe that the owners backed off, Jerry, listen, Jerry Hollendorfer's an old school trainer. They're not going to run on the racetrack unless they work every seven days. He doesn't stop on a lot of his horses. He likes to train them, and he likes to run them. That's just the bottom line. So, and Gary's right. This horse is not going to be short one bit. He, if he's ready and he's the real deal, he's going to be a, a handful. And I don't care what the pedigree says on the top side. Those first two wins, you don't win 20 by 20 lengths if you're not that good. Yep, that second victory, grade two best pal by more than 10 lengths. So the three-year-old debut coming up for the highly touted Instagram in the grade three Gotham. Meanwhile, out at Hot Springs, one of the top sprinters in the entire country, the runner-up from last year's Breeders' Cup Sprint, Whitmore, one to five on the board. He's tried to win the Hot Springs for a third consecutive year. This will be his six-year-old debut as we shift gears and head back out to Tampa Bay, grade three Florida Oaks coming up at a mile and a 16th here on the turf. As we get a look at long shot Margaret's Joy here on the outside, who's lining up in tough company here as a maiden. Wow, oh, yeah, it's just a maiden. When you're looking at a horse that's run one time, it was a good race, 60 to 1. I get it for Michelle Nye, but you're facing some horses in here that are just uh, coming out of some nice races. The one just almost won a grade three. Here's our post parade from just moments ago. Lefebvre, trained by Chad Brown. I rat Ortiz Jr. aboard. Yeah, Lef uh, Chad going for another one on the car today. Mega fortune. John Kimmel sends this one out coming off a maiden score in the turf debut. Well, they brought out everything, right? They stuck her on the on the turf, blinkers, and boom, 42 to 1, lightning struck. Wayne Catalano sends out winner Sunset undefeated in two starts at Fairgrounds. Yeah, you make a good point, Under, undefeated, and you don't really know what's under the hood here. She's has been tested yet, 7 to 2. Elsa, great three winner on the turf at Del Mar back as a two-year-old. Yeah, she was behind Winter Sunset the three last time out. Um, clearly was second best. She needs to improve a little bit more to beat the three. Concrete Rose, graded stakes winner on turf for Rusty Arnold. Yeah, Rusty um, with a nice win in the Jesuit. And then just a, she had sort of a brutal trip. She had to back out of it in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. One of the local hopes, Zarina for Chad Stewart. She's two for three on the Tampa turf. Yeah, she needs to step it up when it comes to the buyer scale. That's why she's a giant price. Blowout for Chad Brown. Debut was a winning one at Tampa. Yeah, and she debuted at Tampa, like you said, and she was favorite. Very rarely you're going to get Chad Brown at 13-1. to 1. Her Royal Highness won back-to-back -back starts on dirt at Laurel for Grand Motion. Yeah, you're going to try the turf for the first time, but she does have a little turf pedigree. Should see some speed out of winning envelope for Chris Block. You know, she's run well on a couple different surfaces, and yeah, I would think so. Although Chris is having a tough meet, but he's a good trainer. Don't let the stats fool you. Stellar agent, she was third behind newspaper of record in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf for Jorge Abreu. Yeah, outran her odds in the, in the Breeders' Cup at 71-1. to 1, Jorge Abreu, ex-assistant of Chad Brown. And the maiden that we saw earlier, nearly 30-1 to 1 on the board, Margaret's Joy. 30-1, to 1, can't believe it. Should be 300-1. to 1. 
Let's head back to Lafitte. Uh, Greg, normally on these derby prep undercards, you hear the word Oaks and you think that it's a prep for the Kentucky Oaks, right? The most prestigious race for three-year-old fillies on dirt in the country. Uh, not the case here. This is the Florida Oaks, and it's on grass. And probably the best thing you can say about these 11 three-year-old fillies is that they don't have to deal with the likes of newspaper of record this afternoon. Newspaper of record, the finest three-year-old turf filly in the land uh, as a result of what we saw at Churchill Downs in November, newspaper of record, wheeling and dealing on the front end. She's going to leave them all in her wake, but you watch. There were two fillies exiting that race, racing here this afternoon. Concrete Rose, she made a run at newspaper of record, then faded, but the story was the big long shot. Stellar Agent missing second by just a neck, as Paul mentioned, running third at odds of 70-plus to one for Stellar Agent. We'll see Stellar Agent on the track here at Tampa as they march towards the starting gate for this Florida Oaks and Stellar Agent. So you have to ask yourself, was that a fluke, that big effort in a grade one race at 70 to one or a sign of things to come? Has she progressed? Has she taken that step from two to three? And keep in mind, she has never raced on firm ground, all of her racing on yielding and good ground. We'll see if she takes to this footing. Laurent Giroux in the saddle. He'll be riding Dream Maker in the Tampa Bay Derby and then Concrete Rose, who Faded in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. Uh, broker maiden at Saratoga the day before. Newspaper of record did. Coincidence. Julian Leperu riding for the very first time here. And here's the key for her. Where we don't know about Stellar Agent on firm ground, Concrete Rose's best race on firm ground in that chase, Jessamine Stakes, at Keeneland. And then, of course, you have the Chad Brown factor. Brown, who just won the Hillsboro about 25 minutes ago with Rimska. Brown has Lefebvre drawn inside. I was interested to see where the money would go here, and she is, in fact, now the current 3-1 to one favorite for this Florida Oaks. Uh, third to a very, very good filly by the name of A Bit Special in her last start. That was a sweet chant at Gulfstream Park, and it's, it's for Irad Ortiz. It's the trip. He has the rail. She's a closer. Sit back, save ground, make one run. It could be a monster afternoon, guys, for Irad Ortiz. Already the win in the Hillsboro. Big shot here in the Florida Oaks, and of course, a date with the Tampa Bay Derby favorite. Win, win, win. Lafitte, thank you, and win, win, win. Trying to win for the fourth time in five career starts, stretching out for the first time to two turns. We highly anticipate that matchup, but first things first here with this grade three Florida Oaks, and what do you make of Lefebvre's chances down from the inside? I like Lefebvre, but I like a filly uh, two out from her, the three horse, Winter Sunset. We haven't talked about her. She's two for two, uh, both at the fairgrounds, and she's by tap, but we know how quirky they can be. Uh, she took them gate to wire, going seven and a half the first time out, comes back at a mile, and uh, she was off slow that day. She didn't go directly to the lead, and she wasn't quirky. She was very professional, and, and one was something left that day. So at four to one, for my money, I'd be taking some action on that right now, Paulie. No, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I really don't. She was bet both times, and for a tap it from the one hole to show speed first time out, I know they didn't go crazy fast, but the last time they went crazy slow, and she just looked like she sort of bided her time. Um, uh, I'd give her a nod. Chad's horses are getting, I don't know if they're getting a ton of action here. I know the one's getting bet because it's Chad, but his other horse is not getting bet. So maybe this filly on the rail is beatable. Yeah, that other one, of course, the seven blowout. She has just a maiden score under her belt, but it was her debut. She's undefeated so far. This obviously a huge class test up at 11 to one on the board right now. The grade three Florida Oaks, Richard Grunder with the call from Tampa Bay here on Fox Sports Saturday at the races. Next to move forward will be Stellar Agent. And from the outside, Margaret's Joy. They're at the post. And they're off and running in the 36th edition of the Florida Oaks. Mega Fortune is away at early, up on the outside, Blowout. Now moves up from between horses, Concrete Rose. Winter Sunset is also away with a top flight, and the last horse away, the late running Zarina. 
They've been through the stretch for the first time, and Megan Fortune has a short lead. Winter Sunset trying to remain undefeated. Right there from between horses, second. Concrete Rose will be carried a bit wide around the turn, third. Meanwhile, LaFave is saving ground toward the rail now, fourth. Elsa is right there in the mix now, racing along fifth. Up on the outside, that's Her Royal Highness, now traveling along sixth. Then it's a length and a half farther back. To winning envelope now seventh. Up on the outside, Margaret's Joy, and the trailer is still Zarina. They settle for their journey up the back stretch, and Mega Fortune has the lead three parts of a length. The Fairgrounds Invader, Winter Sunset, and Channing Hill stocking second. Lafave inching up a closer third. She'll need racing room down along the inner rail. From between horses, blowout also right there in the mix. A length farther back is Elsa. She gets the wake-up call down along the inner rail as they swing around the far turn. Mega Fortune and Landeros trying to steal off. Winter Sunset is now moving up on the outside a bit closer second. Lefebvre is full of run and needs racing room third. There goes Her Royal Highness swinging wide for the drive fourth. Serena swings to the center of the right track and they find... Find seven across the track. Mega Fortune, Winter Sunset from between horses. Concrete Rose is down the center of the racetrack. And Blowout inside the final third on Concrete Rose. Here comes Blowout on the outside. Concrete Rose in a blanket finish. Concrete Rose will prevail over a fast closing Blowout. And they're four across the track for third. Running time on the board, 143.02. Concrete Rose for Rusty Arnold. Crosses the wire first in her three-year-old return to the races here in the Florida Oaks. And this entire field had a chance coming into the stretch. And do yourself a favor, go back and watch this race about 10 times because there were about five different fillies that got stopped. Elsa stopped cold right here. The nine horse comes flying late down on the inside winning the envelope, but it was a wide open race and uh, congratulations to the winner. Yay. It was, you know, the five concrete rows. Lake Rue made the, pushed the button at the right time. There was really no excuses for a couple of the other ones. The three, the Philly, we sort of like Winter Sunset. She fought on, but Lefebvre, like, she sort of got running a little too late, even though she was sitting a good trip. The other Chad Brown really ran well for not actually getting bet. Blowout for Chad Brown. Just a maiden win on her resume. Winds up second there, stepping up in a grade three company. The Hot Springs, Whitmore, runner-up in last year's Breeders' Cup Sprint, his six-year-old debut, trying to win this race for a third consecutive year. Two to five on the board. I get it. I get it. He's two to five. He's got $2.3 million in the bank, but you got to try to beat him, don't you? We shall see. Very <laughs> short price. Let's go to Nancy Holthus. Thanks, guys. Whitmore is coming off a second in that Breeders' Cup sprint, and he's coming off that same route as he took last year, looking for his third straight victory in the Hot Springs. Now, he is clearly not the sharpest out of the gate, isn't going to be able to spot him too much ground, and Ron Moquette said he is just going to let Santana ride his race. So a very solid performance coming out of that Breeders' Cup sprint to some of the best sprinters in the world, namely Roy H. They do expect a big effort out of him today, but he's going to have to take on Hartwood, who's coming out of a win in the King Cotton. He got David Cohen off in the post parade. Probably, I don't think his feet were in the irons. He wasn't prepared, but he warmed up nicely. He is going to have his money ready for him. He is bulking at the gate, though, so it's going to be interesting to see is a little bit of hesitancy. He's never really done that before, so I don't know if it's maybe a little bit of uh, rust coming back off of that layoff, but do a really good job as you can see he's maybe kicking at the hind end so do a great job by the assistant starters and ricardo to kind of persuade him to go in the gate they've now got him loaded and here we go for the 73rd running we'll see if whitmore can make it a hat trick today guys So off the bench, Whitmore, can he win this for a third time in a row? We will find out. This race last year, it looks like he was hopelessly beat. He was just kind of flailing away, and then midway through the stretch, he just found another gear. Yeah, Paul and I were talking earlier about him. It seems like he always draws the one hole, but you know what? He doesn't have to take his post position with him. He's got so many different styles. He's got speed on the on day, uh, certain days. Uh, we've seen him get left and come running. That's what happened last year. I thought he was hopelessly beaten last year. Three-eighths of a mile out, he came with the wide sweeping move, and he was much the best. 
Tell you what, though, he, he's got, no pun intended, shared the upside, is on the upside, the four that just went in. And, and Whitmore has to have his running shoes on today if he's going to beat this horse. Share the upside, the four, trying to win a third in a row, but... Perfect start. Share the upside and Welder go for the front. Share the upside puts his head in front. Welder away in second. Then Hartwood and Whitmore at the rail. And the early trailer is control stake. Up the back stretch in the 73rd running of the Hot Springs. And Share the Upside and Welder are going along. And they're going along very comfortably. Not really sprinting into the far turn. Share the Upside is ahead in front of Welder in second. Two lengths to two-time defending champion Whitmore. He's at the rail. Hartwood just outside of him. Hartwood just put his neck into third. Whitmore's fourth at the rail. Control stake is the trailer as they run to the top of the stretch. Share the upside and Welder. They've been together since they sprung the latch. Here's Whitmore off the rail and within a length of the lead. Whitmore's on the move. Welder and Share the upside. Whitmore in the center of the track. Now only a half length from Share the upside and Welder and here comes Whitmore to below on by. Whitmore now two in front. Share the upside and Welder continue their battle but now it's for second and third. Three in a row in the hot spring for Whitmore. Whitmore won by a length and a half. Share the upside with second. Welder third. Control stake. Finish fourth. Runner up in last year's Breeders' Cup Sprint. Whitmore's return to the races. Successful in the Hot Springs. Time for a post parade for the Gotham. It's brought to you by OCD Pellets. Celebrating over 10 years of supporting the equine industry with our two-in-one bone and joint supplement, go to ocdpellets.com. Family biz went by for Ed Barker, and here's Nick's go. Yeah, almost shocked in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, 40 to one. Did not run that bad in the Sam F. Davis last time. Mind control brought Gregory Sacker the first Grade One win of his career in the hopeful. Yeah, and a uh, Grade uh, nice win, excuse me, last time out in the Jerome to maybe give him a little bit more confidence going into today. As if Bob Baffert was not loaded enough on the Derby Trail, here's much better with Mike Smith. He backed up to si uh, a son of Pioneer now, put blinkers on, and maybe got a little bit of confidence into him. High call stretches out to a mile for the first time for Kieran McLaughlin. I'm surprised at this price at 5-1. to one. I think this horse is going to excel at the mile distance. The undefeated Instagram. Two wins by more than 20 lengths as a two-year-old makes his three-year-old debut. Well, I'll let Maggie... Uh, give us the answer about looking the part, but all the way here from California, he shines pretty good. Not that Brady will be donating 10% of any winnings to the Belmont Child Care Association, coming off a second in the Withers. And like that other Brady, he has early speed and some speed, <laughs> uh, and he's probably might be the horse to catch. You're saying TV 12, not mobile. Teak Vin flew the eight rounds things out at 22 to one. You know, I thought he was okay in his second career start. He fought on pretty well as your favorite. He might improve today at 22 to one. So 11 to 1 on Not That Brady, 22 to 1 on Teak Finn Flew as we go to Andy Serling. Obviously, Instagram is the horse to beat in this race. He was faster than these as a two year old. If he can come back and run as well, if not better, he's probably going to win this race. Having said that, it's not an easy field, and the pace may be tough up front. I like the eight Teekman Flew. Teekman Flew's rider made one of his few mistakes la this winter when he took him to the three-path last time on a track with a huge rail bias, and that rail bias worked well for Heichel, who I question whether or not he's going to get better with more distance. But Teekman Flew should have no problem getting better with more distance. He gets the right stalking post, and he was much the best last time. He is a crazy overlay at his current 23-1 to 1 as we head to Maggie. And he just took a step down, Andy, to 17 to 1. But we'll check in with Instagram. He is your current 3 to 5 overwhelming favorite. And he has not raced since August. Uh, that's a big hurdle to overcome. Now, as far as being ready off the layoff, he looks it. He looks strong. He's really well de developed behind the saddle. But with that being said, he looks like a sprinter. He, he has yet to go beyond six furlongs. He's going to have to come back and go a mile here for Jerry Hollendorfer. Furthermore, a little bit of a bad actor, a little studdish. We saw him not with the pony, go to the gate first. I'm with Andy. I like Teak Van Flew. He will benefit from more ground. This is a big, rangy son of street sense. He's bred to go longer, and I think he had a taxing trip last time. We'll see what trip he gets here today in the Gotham. Eighty five qualifying points on the line for the Kentucky Derby in the return of two year old superstar Instagram shipping out to the East Coast for Hall of Fame trainer Jerry Hollendorfer. He will break from post six. Here's John Embryo with a grade three Gotham.
Teakvin Flew moves in. We're just about set for the start of the Gotham. And uh, they're off. And Instagram broke well and is going right out for the lead. Teakvin Flew on the outside. Nick's Go now moves up along with Much Better. Nick's go will be the early leader, and much better is right there on the outside. The front two have now opened up almost four lengths on Not That Brady, who's on the outside of Instagram. Then it's Teakvin Flu next in fifth, followed by Mind Control in sixth. It's another six lengths to the two trailers, High Call, and at the rail, Family Biz. The opening quarter was 22 and one-fifth seconds, and much better has now taken over the lead from Nick's go. Much better. Going away here now to lead by three. Nick's go in second. Instagram is asked to pick it up. On the outside is the New York bread. Not that Brady. The opening half was 44 and two-fifth seconds. They race around the far turn, and it's much better with a four-length lead. Nick's go is in second. Instagram is third. On the outside, it's not that Brady. Mind control is now coming on down at the rail. Then it's Teakvin Flu, followed by Haikal and Family Biz, and they're all chasing much better who has the lead at the top of the stretch. Three quarters in 109 and one. Here's Instagram on the outside. Here's Mind Control down at the rail. Three of them across the track with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Mind Control down at the rail. Instagram on the outside. Much better is in between those two. The three of them continue to battle it out. And here's Haikal making a late run on the extreme outside. They come for the finish. It is Haikal to win the Gotham. Haikal from way out of it takes the Gotham. Some stakes that it was. Kieran McLaughlin, he won this race last year with Enticed. He does it with high call this year as he goes back to back. And they set some wicked fractions. Ooh. Mikey uh, uh, set them all a flight after him. And uh, Javier Castellano, he was he was pumping from the 5 16th pole. It looked like uh, mind control with Johnny V aboard was uh, all set to get his picture taken. And from the clouds, Haikal uh, with all the speed in there sitting back and uh, instant replay of the race before this, boys. You, can't, you know what? On the backside of this race, Gary, I, I was going to look at you and I thought Haikal had dropped a bit. He had dropped so far back. But you're right, they went so quick up front, he just landed it almost dead last. And then I looked at you guys at the top of the lane, I'm like, is the five got a shot to win this race? I can't even believe it. And he did, he, he ran down mind control. He waits to kick into gear. Of course, his dad, grade one cigar mile winner, proven he likes a mile as well. Rajiv may have made him drop the bet, trying, yeah, right. instead of trying to keep up with those fractions, 22, 44 and two, 109 and two. So high call. He's reeled off three consecutive victories. Now impressive performance here in the Gotham. He collects 50 points basically into the starting gate. Should he go on to the Kentucky Derby? What do you think about Instagram in his comeback race? I thought he ran credible, but a tough spot to come back. I think that's what everybody was worried about was the other speed that was in the race. Um, you know, I, I can't make an excuse for him. I mean, you're coming off the bench. This is the kind of battle you're going to get into. He's either going to really improve off this race or he's going to lay down and sleep for a couple of weeks. So high call. Three consecutive wins now for Kieran McLaughlin and Shadwell Stable. Impressive performance. What about as the distances now get longer for this horse? What would you expect? For high call? Yeah. I don't see a problem with it, uh, with what we just saw there. I mean, he relaxed well. Uh, everything showed me that uh, his last eighth was the, the best eighth of the race for him. I think he's crying out for more ground. We'll probably see him. I would say uh, the, the thing that's right in front of you would be the Wood Memorial on April 6th. Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah, I, I mean, he looked like he has the grindy type, you know? Why not? I mean, like, I still can't believe he won that race. He usually <laughs> makes you wait until he kicks into gear. That's what he's done in each of his last two victories, including the Jimmy Winkfield. Last time he went up the rail. This time he gets to win it 4-1, to one, beating Mind Control, Instagram, and much better from Baffert in the Gotham.
Eclipse champion Blaine was considered by many as the breakout stallion of 2018. His top runners included grade one winner and Eclipse Award finalist Marley's Freedom, plus grade one winner Fault and graded stakes winners Moreau, Beyond Blaine, Miss Kentucky, and Blaine. His yearlings sold up to $500,000, and his sensational daughter Fault brought $1.2 million at the November sale. Outstanding results, outstanding value. Blaine, standing at Claiborne Park. We're back on Fox Sports Saturday at the races, and who could forget this incredible run justify completing the Triple Crown. You can get tickets to the Belmont Stakes Racing Festival. They're on sale now. You don't want to miss it. New York's premier three-day racing festival returns to beautiful Belmont Park June 6th through 8th with admission starting at just $15. Be sure to buy your tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. Belmont Stakes, where champions are crowned. Will High Call be moving on to the first leg of the Triple Crown? He has earned enough points to get into that starting gate the first Saturday in May. He's now reeled off three consecutive victories for Kieran McLaughlin and Shadwell Stable. I liked what I saw there. I liked the finish. I liked the way he relaxed, uh, took the dirt. He did everything right today with a bunch of questions that hadn't been answered. Uh, mind control, he ran a great race in defeat. Uh, looked like a winner coming to the stretch. And uh, Instagram holds on for third. Let's go to Maggie Wolfendale. And three for three with this guy aboard is High Call as he picks up his first graded stakes win. Rajiv, this horse has been very good to you and he seems to possess that really potent late kick. Oh, he sure does. Um, one thing about him, all three times I've ridden him, he finished really strongly, so he's consistent, and I, I know he's going to finish. He's also very game. I mean, last time you were up against the rail, and he went through a hole that was pretty small, and today he got the comfortable trip, though, on the outside. Yeah, well, the last two times you were kind of forced to go through on the inside, and today we were hoping to get him clear space when it's time to go, and, and hoping he shows his kick. We think that if he's in the clear, he's going to give us a more of a sustained, faster run, as opposed to being down on the inside. So it worked out good today where we got to, you know, let him loose on the outside. Now, Rajiv, this is a horse, as far as pedigree is concerned, maybe built to a mile as his max. But do you feel as though when you're on him, can he get a further distance in the mile? Uh, his physical stature and his very composed mindset and, uh, and a strong finish. I would be very shocked if he doesn't actually excel at longer distances. Um, I know you're saying the pedigree, but every other indicator shows that um, the further the better, actually. Rajiv, a job well done. You seem to get along very nicely with High Call. Uh, thank you. All right, guys, High Call picking up his first greatest stakes win in the Gotham. We'll see if he can go a little bit further along the road. Well, Rajiv Mirage, he had a wood win. Very popular for him at the time when he won with Irish War Cry. He was just coming back from injury. We'll see if he can move along that same path again with High Call. You know what, and I, I love hearing what I uh, just heard out of Rajiv's mouth right there. Because pedigree doesn't tell you what he just told us. And mm -hmm. that was straight from his heart. That uh, and, and the most important thing was his mind. Um, you can have any kind of weapon, but if, if they don't have the mind to get them through the paddock, 
of the Kentucky Derby with 150,000 screaming people and getting them to the starting gate. That is the most important thing. You can have all the uh, class and speed and guts in the world, but if you don't have the mind to go with it, then you're in trouble. Saw a quick look there at odds for the Busher, three-year-old Phillies with 85 qualifying points to get into the starting gate for the Kentucky Oaks. Here prices from Whitmore, and he looked very good in his return to the races. Yeah, congratulations. This son of pleasantly perfect out of Scat Daddy Mayor, Melody Spirit. Not only has he won 2.5 million, he's about 1.2 million over there in Hot Springs, Arkansas. They should open up a restaurant called the Whitmore. In the ride that uh, Ricardo Santana put on Whitmore today, I drew the one hole, but there was never any signs of panic. Even at the 516th coming into the stretch, he was still sitting patiently and, and had so much confidence in this old uh, uh, sprinter here. Classy old dude, and when he swung him out, uh, pushed on the accelerator, it was all over with in a couple of strides. Yeah, and the, you know, the two boys he beat, Welder had just crushed three races in a row at Remington, and, and shared the upside was cruising. So he beat two nice horses. So Whitmore still stamping himself as, hey, I'm still here. Race eight at Oaklawn. It is for horses who have never won four lifetime or claiming price of 50,000 among this field. And the favorite right now looking at Lee, who was second in the Kentucky Derby behind Always Dreaming back in 2017. Price is back at Tampa Bay. Concrete Rose, only blemish on the record, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Aside from that, three victories. Yeah, congratulations to Rusty Arnold. I mean, he's been training for a long time. He had a streak at Keeneland when he had, uh, I think, had won a race at each meet like 20 to 25 to 30 years in a row. But this daughter of Twirling Canyon, a powers court mare, what a horse that horse was. Uh, Julian Leperu aboard, now three for four a lifetime. And that pick three, not that bad blowout. Gary, you were talking about that race was a loaded race. She ran well blowout. Yes, she did. And uh, and the race we just watched was a loaded race as well. I mean, uh, Julian rode a great race, kept up Philly out of trouble. He got first run on the field. There was a lot of traffic, a lot of horses getting stopped down inside. So don't d be surprised if you don't see three or four next out winners come out of the Tampa Oaks. Another loaded race coming up right now as you look at the field for the Lamholm South Tampa Bay Derby, grade two. Purse of $400,000 and 85 qualifying points on the line to get into the starting gate for the Kentucky Derby. Let's head to Lafitte Pinkai. Well, Greg, the story in the wagering is the overlay that is well defined. Currently, seven to one, the wire to wire winner, the Sam F. Davis. And that's what we wanted to discuss was pace. Going into the Sam F. Davis, we thought the pace was going to be hot. You had going for gold, a long shot drawn down towards the inside. Nick's go was supposed to be faster than well-defined, and then well-defined breaks sharp. He beats everybody to the first turn, winds up by himself on the backstretch, 47 second half mile clear by a length and a half. That was a Sam Davis. What happens today? What if the other jockeys, they're going to respect well-defined? What if they decide to ratchet up the pressure, apply more pressure to Pablo Morales and well-defined? Then what? I asked Pablo Morales that very question, what he would do in that situation earlier today. Uh, I'm not too concerned about it, to be honest with you. I'm going to play it by ear. I definitely think I'm going to be in front, and that's the plan. They're going to have to use their horse quite a bit if they want to go with me because I think my horse has the most natural speed uh, going along, and I think it will affect them more than anything. But, of course, I'm open to to just uh, go to plan B and just keep my horse running. I think my horse uh, is a free-running style horse and definitely don't want to grab him too much, but I know he will rate a little bit if in case I have to. I don't really see it happening, but obviously um, I'm open to to whatever happens in the race and just keeping my horse happy, keeping, keeping him running, and I think he's going to give me a good run. But hypothetically, if denied the lead with well-defined, can he still, still be effective? Can he still win? I think so. I think he's matured. I think uh, the blinkers has, hel has helped him a lot. Um, <clears throat> I know he's still, I think he's going to still improve. I think he's still uh, some ways to go uh, learning-wise and getting comfortable-wise, but I I'm not too concerned, to be honest with you. I honestly think that if something like that happens, that something like that happens, he's going to be able to overcome. He's still going to give me a good race. This is your winter home. What would it mean to win the most prestigious race here at Tampa Bay Downs, the Tampa Bay Derby? Oh, absolutely. It would be really nice, really special. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm not worried. I'm, I feel confident on my horse. I think he's going to give me, again, a, a good a good run, and of course it will mean so much. I mean, it's one of the biggest, it's the biggest races we have here, especially for a trainer uh, that is based here that is uh, giving me the opportunity to ride her horse. It will mean everything.
Well, we'll see. I don't think rating part of the plan at all mm -hmm. with Pablo Morales and well defined. Here's our post braid. We start with Admire Dale Romans coming out of the Withers. Yeah, this is the horse that they try to get on turf uh, in the second career start and distance. So I don't think that's going to be the problem. And the Withers run was not bad. Sir Winston was in the Withers as well. He finished fourth in that race for trainer Mark Cassie. This horse won the display because it's Kentucky bred up at Woodbine. So Blinkers the last two times has helped. Long shot Lord Dragon took him six starts. He just broke his maiden. The opposite of the two, the, the Blinkers actually taking off helped this horse, but he still needs to improve. Another Mark Cassie horse in Dream Maker. I think this is the horse to beat. Dominating and win last time out. If he can repeat that, he's going to be a handful. The Sam F. Davis winner you just heard from his jockey, Pablo Morales, well-defined. Well, obviously, Blinkers helped, and I don't think they're going to change the tactics. Outshine, lightly raced. He's won two of three starts for Todd Pletcher. Blinkers on last time going seven front longs helped this son of Malibu Moon, and Pletcher always dangerous in these prep races. Win, win, win. Stretching out, set a track record in the Pasco on this surface last start. Without a bad start, that's all he would have been doing. He'd be four for four, but he's three for four, and now he's going to try two turns for the first time. Long shot, the right path at 31 to one with Joe Bravo. This horse has run two good races in a row. Now they're going to stretch out. First one was at Aqueduct, last one was at Gulfstream. Dump sent out by Mike Maker. He was no match for War of Will, the points leader for the Derby and the Risen Star. Yeah, really tough to endorse here at 67-1. Tacitus for Bill Mott, Judd Mott. He's been outworked of late by Hidden Scroll, who we just saw beat in the Fountain of Youth last week. Yeah, the Wonder Horse for Bill Mott that maybe had too much to do, ran fourth there. Getting played here, don't know why, at 8-1. to one. And Zenden, he too will stretch out. He comes out of the swale with Samuel Camacho aboard. For a lot of people who don't know, Victor Barboza Jr. can flat out train, and the 11's not getting a respect at 27 to 1. Don't love the outside post, but this horse could hit the board at that price. Well, we thought win, win, win. He was a morning line favorite. We'll get a lot of attention here. Do you guys expect 7 to 5 on the board? I didn't expect to see uh, 7 to 5. And um, you know, talking about back to well-defined, will he have some pace uh, problems early on? And from that uh, 11 post position, Zen Dan, he's got that kind of speed that he can make uh, things tough on well-defined early on. Well, Kathleen O'Connell, the trainer of well-defined, added blinkers last time out, and he went gate to wire in the Sam F. Davis. She talks about what the difference was in that stakes victory. The addition of blinkers just helped him focus a little more forward. He's always had a lot of natural speed, but he's always kind of been a Dennis the Menace type horse. I had actually thought about putting blinkers on for his first start, but having so much raw natural speed, I had chose, you know, to leave him off. And since he had run very good without him, you know, we left him off. When, you know, they're not running up to your expectations or how they're training, then you have to sneak into the bag of tricks. We had racing luck as far as, you know, he was forwardly placed, which I think that that's his best game. So, you know, thank God everything at least went according to plan. Now we'll see if things go according to plan here this afternoon, coming off that impressive victory last time out. As a jockey, knowing that you're the primary speed and how ran he well in the lead, Gary, last time out. What do you try and do to help relax him in the gate and make sure you break cleanly? Hey, uh, Pablo's, uh, he's got a lot of confidence in, in this horse. This is his winter home. I'm talking about Pablo. I've been in this spot before when you're in your own backyard and you know a horse well. He's not going to worry about it. Uh, he's going to warm this horse up accordingly, know he's going to get a good start. At least that's his most important thing, have him break with his feet underneath him, uh, get away and let the horse do the job. We'll see if well-defined can steal yet another derby prep. Let's go back to Lafayette. All right, Greg, excitement starting to build here at Tampa Bay Downs for the featured event, the Grade 2 Tampa Bay Derby. For those of you just joining us, Kentucky Derby prep race, 85 points available, 50 to the winner. Normally, when you're talking about the favorite in one of these races, well, you're looking at trainer Todd Pletcher. Let's take a look at some of the damage he's done over the years. He has Outshine, who is currently 6-1. to one. This will be the 17th horse. Todd Pletcher's run in the Tampa Bay Derby. Incredibly, when Vino Rosa ran fourth last year, that was only the second time a Pletcher trainee finished off the board in the Tampa Bay Derby. He's won it five times. He's settled nine favorites. And keep in mind, he ran Super Saver here, went on to win the Kentucky Derby. And, of course, Taprit, who won here, went on to win the Belmont Stakes. Uh, is Outshine of that caliber? We're about to find out. The acid test 
this afternoon. He certainly has the right trainer. Also wanted to take a look at Dream Maker, who is campaigned, owned, and bred by the gentleman who won the 2001 Kentucky Derby in Menarcos. That's Jack Oxley. There is Dream Maker, trained by Mark Cassie. Don't judge him based on what he's done at the graded stakes level thus far. This is the grade one hopeful at Saratoga. He was pinned inside, nowhere to go with traffic. Look at him swing off the far turn, caked and covered in dirt. He ate a ton of dirt that afternoon, finished evenly. We'll chalk it up to a learning experience. And then the grade one breeders futurity at Keeneland. He was the morning line favorite. And then that happens. Pinched back, stumbled, clip heels, and his race was over. Blessing in disguise, maybe. He went to the farm at Ocala for trainer Mark Cassie, gave him some R&R, and when he came back, Cassie said his assistant trainer, David Carroll, couldn't even recognize the horse. He had improved so much, he had matured so much, and grown up so much. And speaking of trainers that have done well here, Mark Cassie, this will be his eighth consecutive year competing in the Tampa Bay Derby. He won with his first starter, Perspective, back in 2012. Last two years, a state of honor was second here, went on to run in the Kentucky Derby. Last year, Flamethrower was second here, and he went on to run in the Kentucky Derby. Flamethrower, by the way, who did win the challenger on the undercard of the Tampa Bay Derby. Guys, so, yeah, we thought it might be a little bit more wide open, but no, the money continues to pour in on win, 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 three to two as we've reached post time. We're going to find out how good he is. We certainly will. He'll again break from post seven. He's going to be tackling two turns for the first time. We mentioned earlier in the show, this last couple of starts didn't get out to the best of starts, but his trainer, Michael Trombetta, really feels it was no fault of his own. Kind of a wet track couple starts back at Laurel and then just kind of got off a step slow last time out. They worked him out of the gate back on February the 24th just to make sure everything was A-OK. -okay. And he worked out of the gate fine. Worked out of the gate fine. I wouldn't have worried about that step slow. <laughs> and uh, the way he finished up and, and got a huge buyer that day of 99. And, uh, you know, people may say, who's hat trick? Well, his daddy, Sunday Silence, one of the greatest sires of all time, uh, won the Kentucky Derby, uh, won the Preakness, second in the Belmont Stakes, out of a Smarty Jones mare. So uh, I don't think the mile and the 16th should be a problem, at least today. I don't think so at all. The worry is those last couple of races were five horse fields. So, okay, is what has he been facing? But still, he's been crushing him. What he's supposed to be doing? So, he got to he, he can't break dead last in an eleven horse field and give himself too much to do. So, um, he seems like he gets himself in a stride. It's the Grade Two Lamb Home South Tampa Bay Derby. Our two turns in the repertoire of the. Seven horse win, win, win. Richard Grunder with the call on the road to the Kentucky Derby. The speedy Zenden from the outside post and Sammy Camacho, they're at the post. And they're off and running in the 39th running of the Lamb Home South Derby. There goes Zenden flying off to the early lead. Well defined is taken in hand second. Up on the outside, that's outshine now racing along third and far back in the early going is the late running Dream Maker. Around the clubhouse turn, it's a lively place. Zenden gets over from the 11 post, and Camacho has him on the lead. Well defined, and now Morales sends him clear on the outside with clear racing room at second. Then it's four lengths farther back, outshine. And then it's another gap of five lengths farther back. Admire is there toward the rail, now racing along fourth. Two lengths farther back, that's Tacitus, now fifth. Up on the outside is win, win, win. He's delegated now to sixth. Two and a half lengths farther back, Dream Maker is now on the move from between horses seventh. Sir Winston is there toward the rail. Up on the outside is the right path, and the last horse away is Lord Dragon. They leave the half-mile marker, and Zenden is trying to pull the upset. On the outside, well-defined, and now Morales shakes him up for run second. Then it's four lengths farther back. Outshine is now third. Then it's a gap of five lengths farther back. Admire is fourth. As they approach the quarter-mile pole, Zenden is still there. The Sam Davis winner, well-defined, latches onto him second. Meanwhile, Outshine and Joel Rosario, they'll take dead aim on the top pair and win, win, win. Swings to the center of the racetrack. They're into the stretch. It's still Zenden trying to hang on. Win, win, win is way out on the outside. 
Up on the outside, running is outshine now, gaining ground, and toward the rail is Lord Dragon. Down to the wire, it's Tacitus going to the front. Tacitus strikes to the lead. Tacitus to win the Tampa Bay Derby. Outshine is there, second, win, 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 third. Very close for fourth. Sir Winston was flying on in the running time, 141.90. The stable mate of the highly touted Hidden Scroll, Tacitus for Bill Mott and Judd Mott Farms with the victory here in the Lamb Home South Tampa Bay Derby. He says, hey, I'll show you who uh, Hidden Scroll is, the, the other Billy Mott, the other Judd Mott, and scraping paint here. Um, still behind horses, trapped, uh, laying about fifth right now. You're going to see uh, Ortiz squeeze through a tight opening. Oh, he's already in front. I'm sorry, I missed him there watching the wrong horse, but uh, made a pretty picture in the post parade there, and it's going to look even prettier in the wind circle. Yeah, and uh, Outshine looked like he was home at the top of the lane. Texas just got the split. That was a great ride by Ortiz um, and got the job done. It looks like the seven win, 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 like sort of taken out of his game a tiny bit. I thought he ran okay to, to make up a, a nice little third place finish. Now, high expectations for this one, of course, the dam close hatches. Want to remind everybody as well, they're getting close to breaking from the gate for the 8th at Oaklawn. If need be, we will bring you that race on tape delay. Right now, post parade for the Busher with 85 qualifying points on the line for the Kentucky Oaks as we look at espresso shot for Jorge Abreu. Yeah, espresso shot getting a ton of action here at 2-1. Uh, Former Doug O'Neill assistant Jack Sisterson on his own now sends out Oxy Lady. Yeah, Oxy Lady put the blinkers on three starts ago, got the job done, but has not improved since. Blinkers coming off for Kieran McLaughlin, trained in Liven. Blinkers come off after an experiment with them on that this, this didn't work. Five horse was scratched, excess capacity. The six horse for Steve Asmussen coming off a maiden win. Yeah, and that was not a bad score, especially 19-1. to 1. Heady claim for 50,000. Speedster Philly Joel. He will shorten up in distance for Rudy Rodriguez. And great name here, Philly Joel. And I think the shorten up in distance will help her late kick. Dovey Lovey, the eight. She had a seven-length maiden score against maiden claiming for Gary Contessa. You know what? Yeah, she, she won that race. She's been in good form. A second and a nice little third. Maybe the speed of the speed. Please flatter me. She's undefeated in three starts. A little surprised she's not getting played here at all, considering she's undefeated. Big scratch of always shopping for Todd Pletcher would have been the 11. That horse comes out, the 12, or a more. The other Pletcher runner, she is undefeated in two starts, daughter of Orb. Yeah, she's beaten some horses behind her that have come back and won, and she's been working lights down, uh, excuse me, lights out at Palm Beach Downs um, in Florida. And Ora Moore is the favorite at six to five on the board as we go to Andy Serling. The idea that anybody is six to five in this race is outrageously ridiculous. I'm not knocking Ora Moore. She might win this race. She's probably one of the four or five likelier winners here, and she probably should be about seven to two. Why? Maybe they're just all the Pletcher horses. We did see a very good performance earlier today from the winner of the wood coming back, but this is a tough field. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about Oxy Lady. I like Oxy Lady. The last time she ran a one-turn mile, in fact, the only time she ran a one-turn mile, was in our Tempted uh, Breeders' Cup weekend here. She ran a 94 buyer winning by five lengths. Now, there's an argument. The number's legit for the final time, but there's an argument it's a bit high for the field. But even if it was 10 points high, it would still be faster than anybody in this race has been running. And her next races were around two turns. She shipped out to California for her next start and ran a very credible fourth behind American Pharaoh's sister chasing yesterday. Her first start this year, a tough situation, not the best of trips. Not a great performance, but I love her coming back to Aqueduct. The scene of the crime, as they say, where she ran her best race, cutting back that one-turn mile, and it can't hurt to get Eclipse Award winning or before Jose Ortiz, uh, I would say, or I ran Ortiz, Javier Castellano. I like Oxy Lady in here, but I'll tell you, Philly Joel is getting completely overlooked in this race. Uh, I don't love the rider change with Jose Liscano opting for another horse, but she was sensational last time. She had to run five wide in the first turn to get the lead in a fast pace. And while she got to the good rail after that, she had a lot of work to get there. It's a very promising horse that is being completely overlooked on the board at 20 to 1. There is a lot of value on the board with the 12 Oro Amore getting overbet as we head to Maggie. And Andy, unfortunately, I do like Oro Moore here as well. We see Philly Joel a little bit wound up, but I want to take a look at the two horses coming back off layoffs, including number two, Espresso Shot. She is coming. Uh, she is coming out of New York bred races, in which a mile. 
I think that's her optimal distance here on the main track. And she looks fantastic. Looks as though she hasn't missed a day of, of racing since we haven't seen her since late December. Um, but she's a little wound up in the paddock. But once she got out here on the racetrack, she really kind of uh, moved very nicely and really expressed herself as that she's sharp and she's ready. Moving on to the number 10, please flatter me. She comes back as well off of a layoff. And I was a little bit skeptical as she looks to keep her perfect three for three record intact here uh, in the busher. I thought she was probably more of a sprinter. And yeah, she does possess speed, but I liked her. She showed me that she's a cool, classy individual that maybe she will be able to rate kindly uh, here for trainer Mark Reed. And doesn't look as though she's an out and out sprinter from a physical vantage point either. She, she's big, she's athletic. She kind of won me over in the paddock. I was against her uh, going into this race, but I think she could run well here. But everybody is going for number 12 or a more for Todd Pletcher. Another one that once she came out on the racetrack, she just looked absolutely fantastic, warming up uh, beneath Hall of Fame rider Johnny V, who looks to pick up his second stakes win on this Gotham card. And uh, she looks as though she's a real deal. As far as physicality is concerned, she did stand at the top of this class as they are going postward for this busher. Greg? Well, Maggie, thank you very much. She's going to try going a mile for the first time as well. Two sprints to start out her career and her first two victories. Impressive, winning by more than 10 lengths combined. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, what we're going to see here is uh, possibly a similar trip to what Vino Rosa uh, had earlier <laughs> uh, today uh, of Johnny V just stalking on the outside. I know she's going from uh, six furlongs out to a one-turn mile, but there is other pace in here uh, to set things up for if the race does fall apart, then Oxy Lady's going to come and pick up the pieces up. Yeah, he's got the option to see what happens here with the 1, the 5, Philly Joel, like Andy was saying, the 10. When you draw that outside and you already got a horse that's pretty polished with the two wins, he can just see what he wants to do, Johnny B. And he could be laying 5th here, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and I think he's going to be in the right spot. Like, just sit on the outside and keep her out of trouble. With Oxy Lady, she's already a great at stakes winner at a mile at Aqueduct. Can you forgive that last effort, though, on the Rachel Alexandra? I'll forgive it. Uh, not a lot of pace there. And if you look, I mean, she's shipped everywhere. This is only the second time she's run on the same racetrack. And uh, what's going to be her seventh start today? I mean, she's, she's vanned around a lot and everything. So, yeah, draw a line through that last one, and it makes it pretty tough today. Please flatter me. Breaking from post 10 undefeated. Come to New York for the first time, but Todd Pletcher's Aura Moore from post 12 undefeated as well, and the one to beat with points on the line for the Kentucky Oaks here in the Busher. Here's John Embriol. And they're off in the Busher. And liven away well. Dovey Lovey is there. And from the outside, Aura Moore. And please flatter me as they race up the chute. Now the gray excess capacity comes on to challenge. Please flatter me and Aura Moore for the lead. So three of them across the track. And just in behind, it's Philly Joel who's racing in fourth. Then enliven Oxy Lady. Ujayi is down at the rail. And then Dovey Lovey and Espresso Shot. They are tightly bunched as they head up the back stretch through a quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. Excess capacity. The long shot leads here by a half length. Philly Joel is in second by a head. Please flatter me. Is racing in third and on the far outside, it's Aura Moore. Down at the rail, Ujayi. In between horses there is Oxy Lady. Then comes Enliven. On the outside is Espresso Shot. And farther back is Dovey Lovey. Half mile, 46 and two fifth seconds. Philly Joel now up to poke ahead in front. Please flatter me is moving on the outside with Aura Moore. Excess capacity is now back running in fourth. About to be passed by Oxy Lady and Ujayi. An espresso shot is on the outside as the field turns for home. It's please flatter me, Oro Moore, espresso shot on the outside. Looking for racing room is Oxy Lady, and now they're at the eighth pole. It's please flatter me, Oro Moore, an espresso shot on the outside. Here's espresso shot to take a narrow lead. Espresso shot, the New York bread is going to win the busher. Espresso shot by three quarters of a length and a three-way photo for a second. Among Oro Moore, please flatter me, and Oxy Lady. Moved up 
Well, espresso shot. Eric Concel crosses the wire first here, but Stewart's going to be taking a look at this. They're yeah, going to be taking a hard look at this in deep stretch. Uh, there was some inter interference between Oxy Lady, uh, express shot, and what was your eventual third place finisher, I believe, or more uh, with Johnny V. Uh, just watch back behind here, uh, Oxy Lady. Uh, sitting pretty patient and she's just lengthening stride right now and espresso shot with Eric Cancel aboard uh, She loses her, her ground. I don't know if the inside had drifted out or the outside drifted in We're gonna have to wait till we see the head-on of it But oxy lady does get back up and appears that she gets up for a second. So um, Yeah, there was a, a lot of different things going on in, in deep stretch it really was you can't tell if the 12 was coming out Two is coming in. Concel did take a look to the inside of him. You see the photo. The inquiry sign is already up. He did take a photo to the or a look to the inside to see. Okay, am I clear of the three? Which could be read multiple ways. He it wasn't. Could be, yeah, like <laughs> he could, it could be read more like, oh, did I touch him because that other horse came out? We got to see the way to, to see the head on. But for the three to keep on riding out and to come back and actually run second in this race is obviously going to make the stewards think about this a lot. There you can see or we're getting a tighter shot. It's really hard to tell. It might have been the old well, I, two the, coming in and the 12 sort of coming out. The 12 out. was in front of the three, I think, when the contact happened. Yes, uh, but uh, uh, Castellano, he was, the first thing I said, don't fall. Uh, people don't realize how close you are to those um, to those hills. And this filly, um, Oxy Lady, she doesn't have quick acceleration. She was lengthening. And she looks like she's crying out for more ground uh, from what I saw just now. She laid a little bit closer than she has been today, but um, she was lengthening the last eighth of a mile, and we're still uh, trying to find wow. some things out here right now. And we have an increment. The 10 apparently involved in this. Please flatter me. Well, here's the thing is. Fourth is, place finisher. You know, Cancel gave a pump of the fist. So, like, if, if I think that I might be... Uh, getting a, a, a call here, I wouldn't be pumping my fist. And he's well, right. I, it has I, I nothing to do with him. with what we just saw. It's not nothing to do with him. He's no. right. He's right. The two's clear here. Well, right-handed, so, sorry, left-handed stick from Alex Cintron on the 10th. Please flatter me. Caught Startup the starts the yeah. chain reaction of things. That yeah. kind of answered everything right yeah. there. And uh, Watch Eric right here. You can see him go boom, boom, boom. Like, give it and I'm pump. thinking, okay, Jockey's not going to give a pump of the fist if he just committed a foul. So Burgundy he knew. silks with the yellow cap on top. There it is. And that causes everything. The three got unlucky, bottom line. Tough to swallow. Uh, nice run from an espresso shot, but yeah, unlucky and oxy lady. Let's go to Andy Serling for more. Maggie. And guys, it's, it's actually Maggie here, but um, I just spoke to trainer Jack Sisterson of Oxy Lady as I'm standing next to Javier Castellano too. And while they claimed against uh, or more the 12, they are actually looking at number uh, two as well, the winner here. So uh, we'll see if the stewards take that uh, into their consideration here. But like I said, uh, they they thought about claiming against the winner as well as she is in the winner circle. And that is espresso shot. Greg? She did nothing wrong. All right, so wow. the, you see the two, the three, both flashing. Also, the 10 was as well. So a lot to be determined here. Stewards have some work cut out for them. Yeah, and if I'm in Javier Castellano's shoes, I'm going to kiss the ground when I get back in that jocks room. Because trust me, you feel like you've won a grade one, even though you're disappointed, maybe a little angry at what just happened, cost you uh, a... I'm not going to say a for sure win, but uh, something that appeared it would mm -hmm. be. He's lucky to, that he didn't hit the dirt right here. Yeah, and, and it, listen, this is the 10's fault. Uh, I would think, here's the thing, it's going to remain the same because the 10 ran forth. It, 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 did it change the, uh, like Gary said, did it change the order of finish? Maybe the 3 would have won this race, but the 10 was always going to run fourth. So it's just probably going to stand the way it is. It, it's it's going to uh, change the vacation days for Centro. Exactly, the, exactly what's going to happen, yeah. Yeah, Jockey on the 10, please flatter me. They already took the picture in the winner's circle with espresso shot. Meanwhile, as we take one more look here down the stretch, and at this point, the infraction has happened. I'm surprised that I put the when, inquiry on the 10, yeah. When you saw uh, Cancel take a peek to his left, yeah. you know what he was checking is to make sure 
that uh, Javier had not fallen off yeah. guarantee as abruptly as they came out, and he was there, and he didn't have time to really pull out and give him any ground, but uh, yeah, everybody was pretty lucky to come back in one piece here. So again, in the two path here, Burgundy Silks with that yellow top, and there it is. The bump of the 12 horse, that causes the chain reaction. But the two and three still flashing on the board right now. Yeah, and the trainer's uh, objection as well. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I know the two starts coming in, but he already hit the front end. Like, in, again, this is, now they're gonna get the guys on the phone just to make sure. Um, I get it, but uh, Espresso Shot and Oxy Lady, they really exploded home here. I thought Eric did a good job of like holding his position. Listen, he gave Javier all the room. Javier was going through that hole, the 10 closed it. He had no reason to tighten it up on no. it, to be honest with you. He was out where he wanted to be. They were in full flight for the wire. He was in full flight, and I really don't think that Oxy Lady got in full flight until about 10 jumps before the yeah. finish line. Cause Javier, it looked like he, had, he was popping a filly on the shoulder. He hadn't uncocked his uh, riding crop yet and, and really got into a full flight. He was looking for that, you know, pathway through there. So a uh, big run from both the uh, second, uh, first and second place finishers. Yeah, most importantly, great that everyone is okay here yes, that's true. in the running of this race. But there it is, four, or sorry, two, three, 12, 10. And we've just been told no change. Exactly. A result will stand. I try to put this into people's minds of, of being a jockey. So now that we do have a Hall of Fame jockey, just go 40 miles an hour or, or on your freeway and just try to squeeze your hard car through that hole, right, Gary? <laughs> yeah, there was no squeezing. Uh, and we're lucky, we're lucky we don't have any dents on the cars. And uh, let's hope that they come back safely in the morning. But, uh, yeah, not, not a fun spot to be in right there. And it happens so quickly, though. You don't have time to be afraid. You're just glad to get back to yeah, the jocks right. room. So espresso shot. That victory will stand here at Concel Jorge Abreu. And we'll get you prices from that one coming up in a moment. Eighth race from Oaklawn. Happened just a few moments ago. We're going to pick it up in the stretch with the final odds at post time. High north from the rail went off as your five to two favorite. Again, looking at Lee, second in the Kentucky Derby, a couple years back behind Always Dreaming, went off at seven to two. Within a length of the lead. Then high north, pitch count is beginning to unwind in the center. Here's pitch count trying to run down, remembering Rita and Limation. Remembering Rita has the lead. Cowboy Rhythm, pitch count in the center continues to close. Remembering Rita reaches. Cowboy Rhythm, pitch count to the outside. A late run from looking at Lee. Remembering Rita, pitch count looking at Lee. Remembering Rita. Remembering Rita held off three. It's How much does that flatter Cole Front's win in the Razorback? This horse was no match for Cole Front when he went from all the way on the outside in that grade three victory. Yeah, and uh, we just saw this from the, the stretch home, but was in uh, in front deep stretch. And um, that was the fourth win on uh, remembering Rita for jockey Alex Berza. Good for looking at Lee. That was a nice little race to get him back and forth. We head out to Turfway Park loading up for the Maxim Crane Works Bourbonette Oaks at one mile, 34 points on the line to get into the starting gate. For the Kentucky Oaks, 20 points to the winner. And right now it is Naughty Joker, Wesley Ward, Rafael Bejarano returning to a racetrack that he once dominated back in the early part of the decade. Two to one favorite. Yeah, and I think the five into trouble is the one to beat. I'll tell you what, do not discount the 11. Diva Day, the one of the most underrated trainers in all of America is Thomas Drury Jr., the level was giant first time out. And I know it's maiden against winners for the first time, but this filly's got a ton of talent. Jimmy McNerney with the call. Here's the Bourbon and Oaks from Turfway. start for Naughty Joker to the inside. Birdie is hard hustled up to the outside of her and intent on getting the lead and she's put her stable mate Red Rounder in a tight spot there. So onto the clubhouse turn to the outside fun finder and uh, Birdie these two hook up early. Into troubles back into third. Naughty Joker broke sharp but has been taken in hand back into fourth. Now Red Rounder advances up to the outside and actually moves into third uh, three links for the back. It's unapologetic me. 
Then a length for the back, gold credit from that outermost gate has the rail, and about seven lengths off the lead as they charge up the backside. New Rue comes next, and still a link to Channel Princess. Then a link for the back to Diva Day, and still four links back to the trailer Channel Princess. The first quarter in the Bourbon Ed Oaks, 24 and one fifth second. It's a fun finder. The daughter of cross traffic shows the way three parts of a link. Birdie is to her inside second. Out in the clear, into trouble third. Right to her outside, red rounder fourth. Naughty Joker tucked in along the rail from fifth. Unapologetic Me starts to move from the back of the pack. New Rue's uh, moving as well. She switches to the three wide side. And now Diva Day is underway from the back of the pack. They round the turn. Half mile, 47 and three. And Fun Finder is still showing the way up top as they reach the head of the lane. It's Fun Finder to the outside. Naughty Joker has worked her way off the rail. And as they turn on down for the money, she's come to tackle Fun Finder. So Fun Finder now being confronted by Naughty Joker, who raises the stakes late on the scene. Here comes Nuru up into third, down the inside, unapologetic me, as they're inside the final furlong in the Bourbon at Oaks. And uh, Fun Finder is trying to re-rally and come back and get Naughty Joker. But Naughty Joker's just too good. She takes the Maxim Crane Works Urban at Oaks by about a length and a half. And Fun Finder was there. Also laid on the scene, New Rue in 140 flat. Naughty Joker for the Ramseys. Wesley Ward and Rafael Bejarano take the Bourbon at Oaks. And Rafa having to dig his winter gear out from Southern California. He just had his uh, um, throat, uh, the, uh, what you call it, senior throat removed here about uh, a week ago, uh, Rafael. So back in the cold here, I'll think of that uh, technical term here. And yeah, the tonsils. Had the tonsils oh, removed okay. here. <laughs> okay. We so were no welcome help back to you. in I the winter circle. Yeah, you guys are looking at me like uh, Sorry, we were not a man from outer we're space. So yeah, you weren't in the know. But <laughs> Naughty Joker gets a good trip here from Rafa and uh, Wesley Ward, the trainer. You know, you made a great point, uh, in Greg. Like he was a 40% rider. When he first came over here, he rode at Turfway Park. That's how he made his name and before he went. And so he knows that oval very well. And he's won a ton of races over it. But he had his horse in a nice spot. And Wesley Ward, man, he just knows how to win races. He's got a real nice daughter of Into Mischief on his hands now. Naughty Joker. He's won back-to-back -back starts. Just coming off a maiden win. She actually faced the boys a couple starts back in a stakes race as a maiden. Yeah, and Wesley not uh, afraid to take these dirt fillies or turf fillies, run them on the synthetic. He'll run them anywhere, but this filly's been based at Turfway all winter long and had some decent works coming into it and hadn't been seen since November 24th, uh, $19.80 with... Uh, that's that's Tacitus right there. So, this, yeah, this is the Tampa Bay Derby. We're back at uh, Oldsmar, Florida. So this horse could not keep up in workouts going all out against Stablemate Hidden Scroll. That flatters his form a little bit. We're going to hear more from him hopefully down the line as well. Does it or does does it flatter his scroll? So like like no, again, that's what I meant. Okay, but now what do you do with this horse? He's got talent. <laughs> Bill Mott has I, a few. He also has Country more, House as well, who's another Derby contender. More is better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Tacitus, your winner. Grade two Tampa Bay Derby and paying almost twenty dollars. Let's go to Lafitte Pinkai. Second win in the Tampa Bay Derby for the Hall of Famer, Bill Mott. It's Takedis, and Bill, maybe now people will remember his name as opposed to just referencing him as a colt who's been trading with Hidden Scroll. Takedis, how are you able to get him ready and into this Tampa Bay Derby winner's circle not having raced in four months? Well, we got, you know, we st started going in, in January after have, having had two races as a two-year-old, and, uh, you know, we just, we never lost any time with him. We were just able to keep him ticking over and we were breezing him at Payson Park, which is a deeper type racetrack, sort of like uh, Tampa Bay is. And, uh, you know, we feel like we were very fortunate to get two races in him as a two-year-old. He's mm -hmm. a, a big, growthy horse that you probably wouldn't even expect to win as a two-year-old. Or, you know what I mean? It was nice to get him started, nice to get the win under his belt. And, and uh, we've been planning for one of these prep races coming off the bench. This so. can be, as you know, like a deep, demanding track. What does it say about his potential and upside to win well, this race, not having raced in four months moving forward? Yeah, well, you know, the good thing is, I mean, I think if you run over this racetrack, you can probably be pretty well assured that you'll run over almost any racetrack. It's, it's not always e the easiest surface for a horse to get over. Sometimes they struggle with it. But it's, uh, it should be a very good racetrack to get a good conditioner in him. And that's what we got today. We got a, he got a very good education. 
and uh, we also, you know, got a good conditioning race. Congratulations with Takitas. Real quick, have to ask plans for Hidden Scroll. Anything definitive? Well, right now we're nominated for the Florida Derby, and, and we're going to move forward uh, in that direction. Uh, we'll, obviously, he'll have to breeze a couple times, and we'll see what, you know, how he's training. And uh, I don't believe there's any pressure. If, we, if, we, sure. if we're not ready, then we've got a couple other options, you know, after that date. Congratulations. Thanks for the time, Bill. Thank you. Guys? Danger lurks in every corner on this road to the Kentucky Derby, doesn't it? We see Instagram losing his comeback race. Hidden Scroll was the, the big buzz horse, but he ran well in defeat in just the second start of his career, beating yeah, the Fountain he, Youth. He really did. Uh, held on for fourth with those fast fractions, and uh, they'll get time to rebound from that. Billy Mott, uh, one of the greatest of all times, and um, got to be impressed with what he saw from this Colts day. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I'm agree with you. Is that, is, Hidden Scroll ran better than Luke, and I think he's going to run pretty good for the Derby. Meanwhile, Espresso Shot wins the Busher, survives the inquiry. Trained by Jorge Abreu, New York Final Furlong Racing Stable, and Eric Hansel, your winning connections. We're going to head back to Oaklawn Park and another prep for the Kentucky Oaks with the Grade 3 Honey Bee. Coming up next, we'll get a look at the field here in just a moment as we start off with Perfect Rain's for Steve Asmussen. Yeah, second last time out at the fairgrounds and he's gonna try his luck here at Oakland. And Asmussen's been on fire of late. Speedster here with Motion Emotion, who's won two in a row for Thomas Van Berg. Yeah, you're right. I would think they're gonna try to go to the front end here and try to take this field gate to wire. Johnny Court in the irons. Sunset Wish three for Mike Stidham. Behind a couple of these after a long win streak at a couple different racetracks, might make a better account of herself today. Bizwax, trained by Doug O'Neill, took eight starts, finally broke her maiden. And that was over a sloppy racetrack, so I think they really have to improve today. Mark Cassie sends out chocolate kisses, comes off a win at Fairgrounds on turf. This is such a tough read. Her, her race in the Alcibiades was very good, and then she lost the rider in her other dirt start, so crapshoot with the five here. Power Gauss, she already has 10 points for the Kentucky Oaks, trained by Mark Cassie. I can't believe you're getting four to one on this horse. I love this horse at four to one. Rain Tree Starlet stretches out for the first time. She's won three in a row. Yeah, she has won three in a row. And then since she's added Lasix, now she's just going to stretch out those legs. Hall of Famer, D. Wayne Lucas, sending out Ultimate Mo, 18 to 1. Yeah, when they stretch her out over the slop, the son, the daughter of Uncle Mo, she got the job done as your favorite. Steve Asmussen trained Marathon Queen to a victory in her debut, and she was just barely beat by Power Gal in the Martha Washington. I cannot believe she's 8-1. to one. I think she's one of the horses to beat. She's run two good races from inside slots. And Best Kept Secret comes off a dominating score at Delta Downs back in January. Yeah, a little small over circuit, obviously, Delta Downs, but that was a nice win last time. We're going to take a break in the action. Kentucky Oaks prep on the line, 50 points to the winner to get into the starting gate the first Friday in May. Can Power Gal go back to back off winning the Martha Washington last out? No sport in the world brings the wins home like racing. It's one of a kind, high speed, high stakes action. And Naira Bets takes you there. Place your bets and watch the races live from anywhere. With Naira Bets, make easy, secure deposits and promotions every day to earn reward points or cash. Download the Naira Bets app or visit NairaBets.com. Sign up now for a $200 new member bonus with promo code LIVE at NairaBets.com. I've been really, really pleasantly uh, surprised. I saw quite a few unhappies on the farm, and it looks like the horse is throwing leg and presence and doing everything you want to see a first year sire doing. This one has a lot of bone, he has a great hip angle, he's got a lovely hind leg, and best of all, in motion, he's just an absolute weapon. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm.
Carpe Diem was a serious racehorse with the physical to match. A debut main special weight winner at Saratoga, he beat the greatest stakes winner ready for rye, and he was named a TD and Rising Star that day. Sean, he was brilliant at two. I loved his race in the Breeders' Futurity. I also loved his race in the Bluegrass. When I saw him in the paddock, he looked absolutely stunning. This horse has it all, looks, brilliance, class. I can't wait to two-year-olds to hit the racetrack. Welcome back to Fox Sports Saturday at the races. Three-year-old Phillies headed towards the starting gate in the 32nd running of the Grade 3 Honeybee. This set to go a mile and a 16th. A very, very solid group. 85 total points headed towards the Kentucky Oaks that first Friday in May. Taking a closer look as Mark Cassie has two chances to head to the winner's circle here. Taking a closer look at the number six power gal, David Cohen in the irons. Now she exits her stakes and two-turn debut, scoring the mark. Martha Washington finishing just in front of Marathon Queen, who does return here today. Now, Mark says she has improved since, and she should actually benefit from the added distance. The morning line favorite and current favorite is Motion Emotion, coming from the barn of trainer Tom Van Berg. She's actually looking for her third straight win in the stakes debut, exiting a seven-length win against Allowance Runners. Now, both of her career wins have been earned on the front end, but just to be prepared for today, her most recent work, they let her break off behind horses. So you got to be prepared for any scenario. She's getting a lot of action at the window. The other Cassie contender, though, is Chocolate Kisses. Mark says this is his mystery horse. She's never won on dirt. Now, she's the only one, though, in the field with graded stakes experience. She was a closing fourth in the Alcibiades when nobody else was making up ground that day. He thinks she's okay on turf, but is not convinced that she's better on the main. We're almost time for the grade three honeybee stakes. Good luck. Nancy, thank you. So again, 50 points to the winner to get into the starting gate for the Kentucky Oaks from post position number two. Motion Emotion, the favorite, trying to win her third in a row for Thomas Van Berg with John Cordaboard. Vic Stoffer with the call. Grade 3 Honeybee from Oak Lawn on Fox Sports Saturday at the races. They're off. Motion Emotion wins the break. Best kept secret alongside in second. Rain Tree Starlet going to take back off those two in third. Ultimate Mo comes away running in fourth. Then comes Biz Wax and Marathon Queen with Power Gal. At the rail at Sunset Wish, Chocolate Kisses and the early trailer is Perfect Rains. Solid pace on with Motion Emotion from Best Kept Secret. Motion Emotion, a length and a quarter in front. Best Kept Secret is second by two and a half lengths to Rain Tree Starlet and ultimate mo the californian bizwax races in fifth and she's got five lengths to make up she's two and a half in front of marathon queen and power gal sunset wish has double digits to make up she's joined and passed by sunset by chocolate kisses and perfect rains is the trailer there's a half mile left to run in the 32nd honey bee and motiony motion with a high cruising speed now she is opening up going into the far turn motion emotion two and a half lengths in front of Best Kept Secret in second. Rain Tree Starlet and Bizwax together third and fourth. Bizwax moves at the rail for Gutierrez within four of the lead, but they'll have to go to catch Motion Emotion as she is strong to the quarter pole. Motion Emotion is now five lengths in front of Bizwax who just took second. Power Gal to the outside of Rain Tree Starlet, but they'll all have to fly to catch Motion Emotion, and here's one that is flying. It is Bizwax in the center of the race track. Motion a motion, only a length and a half in front of Bizwax in second. Then comes Power Gal in third and Chocolate Kisses. Motion emotion, Bizwax, Chocolate Kisses dives to the inside and she's going to make the last run to win. The honeybee goes to Chocolate Kisses over Motion Emotion. motion. Bizwax third, Sunset Wish fourth. Called the wrong horse. Chocolate Kisses, trained by Mark Cassie, owned by Debbie Oxley, Orlando Mojico and the Irons take the honeybee. Yeah, and uh, you were talking, uh, Polly, about this filly running on the dirt, a question mark there when she ran the one trip on the uh, dirt. Uh, didn't even finish. She, she lost the rider, but uh, 
You look at her workouts here at Fairgrounds. Uh, she had a bullet 59 and three, three works back, all solid, solid works uh, across there. They were actually at Fairgrounds, but uh, race kind of fell apart in the last 100 yards, and she was a benefactor. I can't fault Johnny Cord. He went for it. You know, they went fast on the front end. He ran everybody off their feet, and then Chocolate Kisses just ran like her hair was on fire here in the last eight. Watch her just see she swoops to the complete outside, and now you're just into the point where Orlando Mojica aboards like. I just got to keep her out of trouble and keep her moving, whether I need to duck inside, outside, wherever I need to do, because I'm picking them up and laying them down. And the two is, she's getting tired, but she's still holding off the Philly to the outside of her. Yeah, she shows some quality and some heart, because she set some extremely f fast fractions early on, 22 and change, 45, almost 46. and. Uh, she looked like she was long gone coming into the stretch, but when you took a peek at those fractions, when I did up on the board, you figured she was going to have to pay the price late. Uh, 11 and 3 for the three quarters and 138. So she was slowing down uh, pretty quickly in that last 16th of a mile, but a uh, big run from Chocolate Kisses today. Wins at 7 to 1, and how about Bizwax for Doug O'Neill? She's coming off a maiden score. It took her eight times to break that maiden, but winds up third in here. You keep talking about the California horses. I get it. I get it. And a lot of people go, oh, you're California biased, this, that. I, well, you know what? The California horses just run. This horse was a maiden and almost won this race. In the end, it's Chocolate Kisses, though, ducking down to the inside and getting the victory here in the grade three honeybee and collecting those 50 points to get into the starting gate for the Kentucky Oaks. Wins for the third time in her career. Now back-to-back -back victories with this honeybee score. We'll be back with more right after this. Program. It was a big, big day. That's the finest breeding program in Central Kentucky. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than America's Best Racing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues. Cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. America's Best Racing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. Grade one winner Lee traveled the world competing against the best of his generation. A graded stakes winner on both dirt and turf, he set a new track record in the grade one Don Handicap and retired with earnings of more than $2.3 million. With yearlings bringing up to 650,000 and his first crop of two-year-olds hitting the track, the sky's the limit for this promising young staff. Lee, standing at Cleveland Farm. Back on Fox Sports Saturday at the races. It's brought to you in part by America's Best Racing, the go-to site covering the sport and lifestyle. Visit americasbestracing.net today. And don't forget, we want to hear from you. Use that hashtag ABR at the races and document your day at the racetrack as well. Back in the Bourbonette Oaks. Excuse me. Bourbon at Oaks, yeah, naughty joker. All right, I'm right. Wesley Ward, Rafael Bejarano, and the Ramseys team up. $6 for the victory, and she's now won back to back. You starts. didn't get the text message on your phone that it started raining in Florence, did you? Confused you a tiny bit. You saw the rain in the winter. It season. wasn't <laughs> snowing. <laughs> was yeah. Rain. Congratulations, by the way. This is played by Anthony Mitchell said the distorted humor mayor. Fleeting humor. And the Ramseys are involved. And you know they're going to be involved on the first Friday in May <laughs> with uh, Naughty Joker. It's a better derby weekend when they're involved, isn't it's it? It's better with Ken. Here's the thing that I love about Ken. He'll tell you how many Maker's Mark uh, uh, trophies he has, but he'll also tell you how many Barbados Cup trophies he has. <laughs> he takes every race serious. 
Still to come, the Jeff Ruby stakes another Kentucky Derby prep, 20 points to the winner to get into that starting gate. Grade three, of course, on the synthetic and a race that was won by Animal Kingdom in the past who would go on to win the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and uh, it's not impossible. And uh, the surface is actually, if, if they get over it, fine. If you're going to have a horse that is either turf pedigree or all weather surface uh, like this is, if they're going to adapt, they're going to adapt to Churchill Downs. I've seen turf horses run on that main track that won't run at any other track, but they will run mm. at Churchill Downs. So don't forget that Animal Kingdom did it. So with the synthetic you got here, Gary, now it gets a ton of kickback, does Turfway. With the rain, that's got to help the kickback a little bit, right? Is that going to tighten up the track, you think? Uh, it'll tighten it up most definitely, and the colder it gets, the more it tightens it up and the more the kickback is. But one thing I'll t tell you about the kickback, it's not near what the kickback can be at other racetracks yeah. as far as the pain of it coming back. It's like cotton balls coming back. The horses react to it a little bit, um, you know, ducking and diving from it. But as far as it, feeling it come back, it's, it's like snow hitting yeah. you and, and not dirt clods, so no big deal. Derby future pool number three. You saw that promo there real quickly. Pool closes tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can go to nairabets.com for details and earn five times points, uh, reward points on your Derby future pool number three wager coming up. So we'll see who can shine in this race. Some like it hot brown. That's a horse that we learned about at Saratoga Paul last summer on the turf, but he proved that he loves his uh, synthetic at Turfway as well. He was giant last time, and he was a horse that they had originally wanted to put on the turf. And again, when they did put him on the turf, of course, he ran some bang up races. They come to the synthetic, and he wins. And that is key. Like Gary was telling you, when you come to these type of places where it's a different kind of synthetic, some horses take to it, some don't. He obviously took to it, won nicely as your favorite at six to five. And I don't see why he's not going to be the horse to beat, and the public thinks that as well. Yeah, big performance in that. Bataglia last time out winning by three and a half plus lengths. Had a little bit of trouble in that race as well, but we'll see. A lot of times someone can step up and make themselves heard here on the, on the Derby Trail. We shall see what happens next. Chocolate Kisses and the Honey Bee wins for Mark Cassie, Debbie Oxley, and Orlando Mojica. And a, a huge late run here for Chocolate Kisses. And if you were game enough to bet on her first uh, real race on the dirt. She returned $17, $6, and $4 for the show. Let's go to Nancy Holthus for more. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you, God. Thank you to Mark Cassie, to the owners, uh, my agent, he did a great job. Like, um, in the beginning, I know we had a lot of speed. You know I mean? My horse got a speed too, but he's a third horse. Um, he very slow in the beginning. I hold my horse. Like, I said, plan B, and he had to just try to make it um, to, the, to the end because I know in the beginning going faster, but he's a nice horse. <laughs> Well, a nice horse indeed. She earned 50 points towards the Kentucky Oaks for that win. And uh, yeah, Mark was definitely right. She belongs on dirt. Oh, yeah, he's right. <laughs> well, congratulations to the winning connections in today's feature, the Grade 3 Honeybee. Another look here down the stretch. and. Motion to motion in front, but would start to weaken late. Yeah, now the, the winner should be noted. Uh, she's worth keeping an eye on for sure for the fantasy and the uh, uh, Kentucky Oaks for the matter. Down the back stretch, she was buried down inside. She was getting a lot of kickback in her face, a lot of dirt. Uh, Orlando ducked and, and weaved his way to the outside into the stretch and finished with a flurry. Let's take a look at the Naira Betts cross country pick five follow along, just over 20,000. In the pool, got some numbers in there. The payout, sorry, twenty thousand three hundred forty-five. Yeah, because you you beat Instagram. I, everybody was single on Instagram, and then you came to the last race. And I think a lot of people seeing the twelve horse on the outside, and Chocolate Kisses sort of just buried that. Um, well, if you had that, that's some good handicapping. And let's go have a beer tonight. Wheel it right on back next weekend because we're here with more good derby preps, including the Rebel split divisions. We're going to see those undefeated Baffert runners most likely in that spot. Maiden special weight, 10th in Oakland, still coming up. And we'll have the story of Kendrick Carmouche. He was sidelined for six months with a broken leg. What his road to recovery was like when we return.
the last x-ray I got, my doctor said you all healed up and I was just tickled pink, man, because I don't think I went to sleep that night. No sport in the world brings the wins home like racing. It's one-of-a-kind, high-speed, high-stakes action. And Naira Bets takes you there. Place your bets and watch the races live from anywhere. With Naira Bets, make easy, secure deposits in promotions every day to earn reward points or cash. Download the Naira Bets app or visit NairaBets.com. Sign up now for a $200 new member bonus with promo code LIVE at NairaBets.com. Mastery retired undefeated, winning his four starts by a combined 20 lengths. A six-figure September sale purchase, he won impressively in his two-year-old debut at Santa Anita. From there, he captured the grade three Bob Hope stakes and completed his juvenile campaign with a dominant performance in the grade one Los Alamitos Futurity. At three, the top-rated son of Candy Ride sizzled in the San Felipe. Now his much-anticipated first crop arrives in 2019. Mastery standing at Cleveland Farm. Red to lead, his name is Commissioner. Elliot, I can't wait to see the Commissioner Foles run this year. He was always one of the best Foles we had. He was always one of the best yearlings we had. He was a maiden special weight winner at two at Saratoga. He went on to be a multiple graded stakes winner, and he's the last classic place son of AP Indy. Let me tell you, they look the part at the sale. He's by AP Indy. He's got a bottom side to boot. He's got every chance. I'm really excited about this crop. We are back on Fox Sports Saturday at the races on Fox Sports 2. It's brought to you in part by the champion sprinter, Run Happy. Perfect 7-for-7 seven seven in his career while sprinting. Three-time grade one winning millionaire. Now in legendary stall number one at Claiborne Farm and celebrating a birthday earlier this week. There it is. Where's the cake? He happy birthday, it. Run Happy. Probably did. There it is. Carrot cake. Mm. Well, if you're a professional jockey, it's usually not a question of if, but when you will sustain an injury. For jockey Kendrick Carmouche, his latest setback came in September at Kentucky Downs. It sidelined him for six months with a broken right leg, but his time away from the game made him miss it even more. In six months, man, if... if sitting on the sideline. I just wanted to sit on the horse. I, I mean, I went to the farm. I just sit on the horse. The first time I got on the horse, I cried, man, because it's just, I was born in it, you know? It's a different feeling. The last x-ray I got, my doctor said you all healed up, and I was just tickled pink, man, because it just, man, speechless, speechless. Kendra Carmouche, back in action after six months on the sideline. It hasn't seemed like winter racing without you here. Oh, man, I tell you, and watching you guys and picking these horses and watching them go around the track, man, you don't want to be on the sideline. I don't, I don't think no jockey want to be on the sideline, man. You are a fan favorite. One thing around here, everybody knows with Kendrick, you know, they got a speed horse, they could expect that horse to be going. And you're going to get an A-plus ride. And they're off. Here, 40. You know, when I got to the quarter pole, I'm still sitting and, and I'm like, man, I look up, I look at the wire, I was like, well, it's still a long way away, so Kendra, you gotta ride hard and, and just keep him straight and just motivate him. And man, when that wire came up, if, if you could have filled my heart, how hard it was pumping, I could have made somebody come back alive. For the finish, and whistling birds want it, half life. My words cannot speak for what happened in six months and me crossing the wire the second time I was back winning the race. When I was hurt, I had so many people call cards, cakes, 
cookies, it sums up how good my dad put in my head to respect everybody and be kind, you know? I teach my kids that every day. Always be happy and be respectful to everyone, you know? And, and, and good things and good people, they're gonna surround you. I always try to improve myself every single day. You, you can only improve yourself every single day if you got the right type of mind to do that. In the next 10, 15 years, I just want to stay safe in this game and, and, and ride as hard as I can, win some races. It's, it's just the love of the horse, love of the horse. I can't get away from it. Well, it is great to see Kendrick Carmouche back. He's such an aggressive rider. He dominated at parks for a long, long time, but he always has a smile mm -hmm. on his face. What's that like to be out and to go through something like that? Well, I was just going to say that I, knowing Kendrick and what a great guy, he never has a bad day. And to see him and talk about that, uh, being out and having never been out of the game for that long, it brings you down, man. And all you can do is think about getting back and uh, am I going to come back? as good as what I once was, but good to see a smile back on his face because he has a smile 99% of the yeah. time and it's good to have it back. He was a Mike Venezia award winner a couple years ago. We had another award just recently handed out here by Santa Anita, George Wolf Memorial Award winner this year, uh, selected by a nationwide vote of peers. To Scott Stevens, your brother collecting the award this year, and you two become the only brothers ever to each earn that award. Yeah, finally. It's been a lot of years in the coming, and it was uh, 1996 when I got uh, the George Wolf Award, and didn't know if I deserved it, but Scott has always deserved uh, to uh, get the George Wolf Award. He's, uh, he is the man in the jocks room, and everybody across the nation knows him. He stands up for jockey's rights, but he gets along with management. He's got a gift that Gary Stevens doesn't have, and that's he's able to talk to anybody in the right <laughs> tone of voice. And he kept, uh, took care of his little brother for a lot of years, right up until my last week of riding and having a lot of faith in, in me, but me questioning him, asking him questions right up till the end. And, Scott, congratulations on uh, the George Wolf Award. I want to congratulate you and Scott. I'm a kid that grew up at Turf Paradise and watched Scott win uh, so many of those races, and he deserves this so much. He could have went to any jurisdiction and been a champion jockey at any other place. He decided to stay in Arizona because that was his home. He's won 4,800 races. He's a hell of a jockey, and he's going to get to 5,000. And, like, you know, I learned so much of him, and he made a difference on a racehorse at Turf Paradise when I was a kid. 58 years old, and he is still going strong. Yeah. Congratulations to Scott and Gary Stevens, only brothers ever to each win Congrats. the stuff. George Wolf yeah. Memorial Award. We're going to take a break in the action. More coming up. Jeff Ruby Stakes on the road to the Kentucky Derby is next. Stay with us. One of the things I like about Run Happy is he's one of the more athletic sires that I've seen. He's clearly passing that on to his offspring. He's really same from the foals, and they're starting to look a lot like him. Well, this horse comes from a, a great sire who was just so talented. We've wanted to buy one ever since we started looking in November. 16 and a half, market bank 250,000. And then you add a sire like Run Happy, and then you put a physical on the ground like that baby, and, you know, for us, it's a must-have. Run Happy, standing at Cleveland Farm. No sport in the world brings the wins home like racing. It's one-of-a-kind, high-speed, high-stakes action. And Naira Bets takes you there. Place your bets and watch the races live from anywhere. With Naira Bets, make easy, secure deposits and promotions every day to earn reward points or cash. Download the Naira Bets app or visit NairaBets.com. Sign up now for a $200 new member bonus with promo code LIVE at NairaBets.com. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than AmericasBestRacing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. AmericasBestRacing.net is a sport for you. Live it. Love it. Bet it. At the races, 
on Fox Sports 2. It's brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. Are you up for anything? You'll want to visit americasbestracing.net for the latest and greatest. And again, use that hashtag ABR at the races and share your experience at the racetrack. Continuing down the road to the Kentucky Derby with the grade three Jeff Ruby Stakes, $200,000 purse and 20 points to the winner. Top four finishers earned points into the starting gate for the Kentucky Derby. Even money right now on some like it hot brown. Yeah, and the one that beat coming off a nice win in the Battaglia, which is basically the prep race for this. Here's a look at Dynamic Racer, who comes off a second place finish in the John Battaglia behind Some Like It Hot Brown. Yeah, 30 to 1, which that almost caused an upset. Moonster, one of two in here for Dale Romans. 64 to 1 in the Sam F. Davis, so he's gonna have to improve here. Five star general was sixth at seven to one in the Sam F. Davis. Yeah, you know, this horse won the Central Park at Aqueduct and had a brutal trip in the Sam F. Davis. The other Dale Romans runner, Dabo the Four. Yeah, maybe hopefully for your Clemson fans, if you'd like a little Dabo Sweeney. Baytown Jimbo, 13 to 1. Nah, tough for me. Sorry, to 58 to 1. Yeah, 58 to 1. Tough to endorse. Skywire, the six horse, we'll see next for Mark Cassie. This horse, undefeated son of a fleet Alex. Yeah, I don't know if this is a private purchase or not, but Mr. Barber got involved. And when Barber and Cassie are involved, they usually win races. Won a race that was taken off the turf last time out. That was a win on a sloppy racetrack at Gulfstream, won by six lengths. Counter offer, 32 to 1 long shot. We see next here, son of Tapasar for Ian Wilkes. He runs his races upside down. Look for him late. He'll be laying way back, hoping um, there's a uh, pace duel up front. 12th of Neverland, Ray Handel with a horse on the Derby Trail. Yeah, Ray Handel, a regular trainer out in New York, going to take a shot here. This, this cold's done well since he's added blinkers. Kenny McBeak has a couple of nice Derby prospects. Here's Curlin Gray, son of Curlin. Just so much like the Kenny McPeak runners. They just sit back and make one run late. Mike Maker sends out some like it hot brown. He's trying to win this race for the third time in the last four years. Yeah, the son of Big Brown is the horse to beat. Comes off a nice win at the racetrack. And a son of Flatter for D. Wayne Lucas. Speed app, the 11. Yeah, I've been running at Oakland Park and not bad races there. Now I'm going to try synthetic for the first time. We're going to take a break. Grade 3 Jeff Ruby Stakes Kentucky Derby Prep Race is coming up, and some like it hot brown, even money favorite. He just was a dominant winner in the Battaglia over the surface back in February. Can he go back to back? This one is by Tappet and is a brilliant grade one winner. Elliot, of course you're talking about Constitution. He was a TD and Rising Star in his debut. He became an undefeated grade one winner when he won the Florida Derby in his third start. And in the Don Handicap as a four-year-old, he ran a 111 buyer speed figure, which is still the fastest Tappet around two turns. And don't forget about his allowance race when he beat Wicked Strong and Tunnelist. His first two-year-olds have every right to be fast. like her they're hard to find when you find them you do your best to try and get them really quality filly beautifully made and moved really well and we're very happy to get her she was one of our key horses today uh, to try and get we thought she'd come in south of 200 but like everything else when you're chasing the ones you really want it's always costing a little bit more so we have to stretch for her but we're happy to have her run happy standing at Claiborne Farm 
Welcome back to Fox Sports Saturday at the races. It's time for the nightcap at Oaklawn Park. Race 10 is for three-year-old Phillies, a maiden allowance event as they are set to go six furlongs in distance. Going to discuss one of the two first-time starters in the group, coming from the barn of Jimmy DeVito, who has had a phenomenal meet here thus far. Alex Conchari aboard the number 12. Shyla Baby does get that outside post position. Sired by Gradar, who is about 14% when debuting winners, uh, runners. It's also the first full for an unraced dam. Now she has posted some very sharp works in the morning. And DeVito himself is about first... 15% with first timers. Now she has caught a lot of eyes here in the morning as well. Phil Sims sends out the number eight summer delivery. Stuart Elliott also having a great meet here so far. A good second off the layoff when making the Oaklawn Park debut early last month. She settled mid pack and hit some traffic around the three sixteenths and was able to get up for second. A lot of horses we are see improving second start over the surface. Donnie K. Von Hamel, another barn who was firing big, big numbers second off of a trip over the local track. He sends out the number seven, Mucho Moss, with the services of Richard Aramia. Exits a third by only two links. Got bumped around pretty good at the break, so should definitely stand to improve with a clean trip out of the starting gate today. And we have seen a lot of Donnie K. Von Himmel runners really stand to improve and at big prices second time out. Unsweet T, good Arkansas namesake here. The number three for the barn of trainer Jinx Fires. His go-to with jockey John Cord in the irons broke from the 10 post when making the debut last out and dueled on the front end early. Actually had a brief lead going into the stretch and faded to run fourth. And that was also behind Mucho Moss. The barn fires about 25% second time out. So should be able to have an a big improvement guys yeah I always like to have experience unsweet T speed backed up a little bit in the debut should be tough your second start but that first timer on the outside attracting a lot of attention yeah the the first timer getting a lot of attention the one thing I don't like about unsweet T is uh, not the connections by any means I like it second time out but I don't like going from the outside uh, went from 10 of 11 last time, so got the Sith trip on the outside. Moves down inside today to the three-hole horse just to her outside. Uh, has some speed as well, so let's see what happens. See if uh, she doesn't get caught up in a speed duel early on. I tell you about the seven, Mucho Moss. I thought that last race was pretty good. She needs to get away from the gate. She has issues out of the gate, but if she can break with this field, I think she can run here. Vic Stoffer with the call. Here's race 10 from Oaklawn. They're at the post. They're off. Awkward start, Champagne Tail. Good start, Pika, who goes for the front from Letters for Bell in second. Shyla Baby is third. Listen Up is at the rail in fourth. Then comes Unsweet Tea and Sweet Giselle. Next, it's Summer Delivery and Tel Tonto, followed by Mucho Moss and Bribe. And the slow start has Champagne Tail at the back of the pack. Letters to Bell, the leader into the far turn. There are six horses lining up chasing her. Way in the center of the racetrack and moving up is Tel Tonto. Pika's just outside of her, and those two look like they have caught letters to Bell around the far turn, and Tel Tonto goes all the way up with Shyla Baby. And now these two are matching strides. Pika's in third, summer delivery fourth. Musho Moss is beginning to unwind, but she's still six lengths behind, and the leader at the top of the stretch is Tel Tonto. Tel Tonto, a half length in front of Shyla Baby in second. Musho Moss continues to close in the center of the track. She'll have to run down summer delivery, who has has taken over the lead. It is Summer Delivery in front. Shyla Baby, Mucha Moss is up into second, but she's two and a half behind Summer Delivery, who has the lead and has the win. Summer Delivery beat Mucha Moss by two. One left. Speed up. The maiden to the outside coming up and in. They're at the post. And they are off. In the 48th edition of the Jeff Ruby Stakes, and all the way in good order. 
And from the outside, the favorite, some like it, Hot Brown jumped well. It's five-star General, though, who has the most speed as they race by the stands and under the line for the first time. So five-star general will dictate the terms, but the favorite, some like it, Hot Brown, will take it to him early. He's keen to go on, but Tyler G trying to ration back that speed as Speed App, the Maidens, is to the outside of Dynamic Racer. They are third and fourth, a length in front of Baytown Jimbo. The long shot's fifth, about four and a half off the pace. Then comes 12th of Neverland, and uh, advancing from between horses is Skywire. Moonster is stuck in along the rail, about four lengths in front of Dabo, who races to the outside of Counteroffer. Then six lengths back to the trailer, Curl and Gray. Up the backside they go. They got the first quarter in the Ruby in 23 and 3. And the favorite at 3 to 5. Some like it. Hot Brown shows away three parts of a length. Half mile, 47 seconds flat. Five star generals back into second. Dynamic Racer is third as they continue to run up the back stretch. To the outside of Dynamic Racer races speed up as they head into the far turn. Still, some like it. Hot Brown shows the way. Five-star general is second. Three links for the back. Dynamic racers third. And speed app is fourth. Now on the move from the backfield. Here comes Skywire and counter offer. Also, Dabo switches wide as three quarters was rolled out. One, ten, and three. Fast fractions being set by some like it. Hot Brown. Five-star generals being churned upon to keep pace from the inside. Here comes Dynamic Racer, the local horse. Races up into third. And now Skywire has kicked it into top gear as they straighten away in the Jeff Ruby stakes. And it's all some like it. Hot Brown still finding Dynamic Racer is running a huge one by the furlong pole. It's some like it, Hot Brown, Dynamic Racer, and way out wide, finishing full of run. Here comes Moonster. They're in the final furlong, and some like it, Hot Brown, the Bataglia winner, is going to take the Jeff Ruby Stakes in front running style, and he stops the timer in 152 flat. Un Some like it hot brown, a little green in the stretch there, zigzagging all over the place, gets the win in the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Yeah, and you can see why uh, he's been second three times, uh, the way he's wandering around, and Tyler Gaffleon uh, doing a great job keeping this horse busy. Doesn't like that left-handed stick a, a, a whole lot, but what do you do when you try to keep one busy <laughs> when you're all out by yourself? Yeah, he started liking not Lair a little bit towards the end, so maybe he's got to like it like a little more distance. Some like it hot brown, Mike Maker wins this race for the third time in the last four years. We'll be back. This successful son of AP Indy has sired six millionaires, including 2017 Eclipse champion three-year-old West Coast. A dominant winner of the grade one Travers and Pennsylvania Derby, West Coast also placed in the Breeders' Cup Classic and was runner-up in the $16 million Pegasus World Cup. In the sales ring, juveniles by Flatter brought up to $600,000, and his yearlings sold up to $460,000. Flatter, standing at Claiborne Farm. that everybody wants in our game is they want speed. Daredevil has the speed. You know that he ran a 107 buyer when he won the Champagne Stakes, the grade one. That's faster than Uncle Mo, Scat Daddy, and Union Rag. So as a two-year-old, he ran a 96 buyer when he broke his maiden, a 107 buyer in the Champagne, beating a nice horse and upstart. He is by more than ready, another feather in his cap. I can't wait to see these horses run it too. We are back on Fox Sports Saturday at the races here on Fox Sports 2. Thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. Show brought to you in part by champion sprinter Run Happy. Now in legendary stall number one at Claiborne Farm. Set a track record at Keeneland in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. One of the King's Bishop as well at Saratoga. Had an incredible campaign on his way to an Eclipse Award. Back at Oaklawn in race 10, summer delivery with the victory, returning $8 for the win for trainer Phil Sims with Stuart Elliott. Yeah, congratulations to the connection. Stuart with a nice little ride. Mucho Moss, uh, the, the, like, I thought ran on well. If you had that pick five, get a nice little payoff there, $1,500 or $1,600. Tell Tonto 
for all you Lone Ranger fans, runs third. Back of the Jeff Ruby. Some like it hot brown. Proven, he loves synthetic, at least in Turfway. Back-to-back stakes victories to kick off his three-year-old campaign. Can he handle dirt? That's the question that comes in the very near future for him. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. An undefeated graded stakes winner on the track, Algorithms was the nation's number one sire of two-year-olds in 2017 by percentage of winners. His top runners include Rich Mommy, winner of the grade three Sugar Swirl, multiple stakes winner and graded stakes performer Recruiting Ready, stakes winner and graded stakes performer Vanish, and recent stakes winners Taylor Spirit and Tracy Racing. In the ring, his two-year-olds have brought prices up to $300,000. Algorithms, standing at Claiborne Farm. I was hoping when we entered this horse in the sale that I would come up here and uh, be in my name's happy and have the first uh, run happy that hit it out of the park. We're ecstatic about it. He's just a natural athlete. He's got length. He's got good substance to him. He's very correct. He's got a very free, effortless walk. Very intelligent, good mind. This is the horse we brought here to make a sound. Run happy, standing at Cleburne Fox. Program. It was a big, big day. That's the finest breeding program in Central Kentucky. No sport in the world brings the winds home like racing. It's one of a kind, high speed, high stakes action. And Naira Bets takes you there. Place your bets and watch the races live from anywhere. With Naira Bets, make easy, secure deposits and promotions every day to earn reward points or cash. Download the Naira Bets app or visit NairaBets.com. Sign up now for a $200 new member bonus with promo code LIVE at NairaBets.com. We're back on Fox Sports Saturday at the races. Some like it hot brown in the Jeff Ruby Stakes at Turfway earns 20 points to get into the starting gates that first Saturday in May. Now the question is, can he handle dirt? You know what, I wouldn't say that he can't. He's been working on the dirt and um, I know that that last tape of a mile might not have been a uh, real visually impressive. I think this horse is going to be better with a horse in front of him instead of him leading. He's wandered about his last uh, four races, even in, when he won the Battaglia, when he got in front, he started wandering around. Mm -hmm. So this horse, uh, he's all right. You know what? He's won now twice on synthetic. He's won a, he's run well on a yielding turf course. He's won well on a, f a, f a fast turf course. So four different surfaces, I think he'll handle the dirt, Wolfie. We're going to take a break. We will find out soon enough. Some like it. Hot Brown, impressive getting the win. Warfront has sired eight champions and ten millionaires. Recent grade one winners include Holmesman, Fog of War, Lancaster Bomber, and European champion U.S. Navy flag, plus 2019 Kentucky Derby hopeful War of Will. He's also sire of the highest price yearling sold in North America in 2018. An international super sire on all surfaces and all fronts. War front, standing at Claiborne Farm. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than America's Best Racing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. America's best racing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. I've been really, really pleasantly uh, surprised. I saw quite a few unhappies on the farm, and it looks like the horse is throwing leg and presence and doing everything you want to see a first-year sire doing. This one has a lot of bone. He has a great hip angle. He's got a lovely hind leg. 
and best of all, in motion, he's just an absolute weapon. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Final furlong, and it's all American Pharaoh answering this test with flying colors. American Pharaoh will romp home in the Rebel, widening to win by about eight. American Pharaoh's got a two length lead. Frosted is all out at the 16th pole, and here it is. The 37 year wait is over. American Pharaoh is finally the one. American Pharaoh has won the Triple Grand. Incredible moment when American Pharaoh ended that long, long drought. Who knew it would just be a few years later that Bob Baffert would accomplish it again with Justify. I've never heard any sporting event as loud as I heard Belmont Park the day that he won that Triple Crown. Yeah, uh, that call of uh, 37 years, the wait is over. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. It really was. I remember I was in the winner's circle. I decided I'm, I'm not going to – it was the best move I ever made, not watch the race. Watch the crowd. I turned around and just watched the crowd. It was pretty cool to watch all these people go nuts. It was awesome. American Pharaoh's three-year-old debut, by the way, came in the Rebel Stakes during that Triple Crown yeah. year. We're going to have the Rebel Stakes for you coming up next weekend here on Fox Sports Saturday at the races. And with the cancellation of the San Felipe here in Southern California, we're looking at split divisions of that race. And that means Bob Baffert could send improbable, undefeated, Breeders' Cup juvenile winner, game winner, maybe even mucho gusto, but for sure if he sends two, they'll be in separate divisions. Yeah, and I, I would say he's probably going to be favored in, in either one of those uh, spots with last year's uh, champion and game winner. He's proven traveling uh, in uh, the improbable. He'll be getting on the plane as well. And his record at Oakland Park, Bob Baffert is within the last five years. It's, it's got to be in the 50, 60 percent. Whatever he sends there usually wins. And they, they, yeah, and if they put game winner and improbable in different divisions, he might win both of them. Yeah, they split divisions once before. He won them both. Yeah. By the yeah. way, big shocker. Everyone's favorite thing to do at the racetrack, go to the windows and bet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking part in the poll. Rebel Stakes coming up next weekend. Of course, in the Gotham, high call. Wins it a mile. Now we'll try and stretch out even further, likely in the Wood Memorial. Tacitus, stable made a hidden scroll. Gets the job done in the Tampa Bay Derby and some like it. Hot Brown and the Jeff Ruby. We'll see you with the Rebel Stakes. Split divisions next weekend on Fox. One of the things I like about Run Happy is he's one of the more athletic sires that I've seen. He's clearly passing that on to his offspring. He's really same from the foals and they're starting to look a lot like him. Well, this horse comes from a, a great sire who was just so talented. We've wanted to buy one ever since we started looking in November. 16 and a half, market to bank 250,000. And then you add a sire like Run Happy, and then you put a physical on the ground like that baby, and, you know, for us, it's a must-have. Run Happy, standing at Cleburne Farm. This proven son of Giants Causeway has sired four millionaires, including Claiborne Farm Stallion Lee. Recent top runners include four-time graded stakes winner Miss Sky Warrior, three-time graded stakes winner Sharp Samurai, multiple stakes winner Bal Harbor, and Dubai Group 3 winner Shamal Nibras. Last year, his two-year-old sold up to $540,000, while his yearlings fetched up to a whopping $575,000. First Samurai, standing at Cleburne Farm. The Kentucky Derby is a race that we all want to capture. But what he did in the Florida Derby, that got me great. But inside the 16th pole, the 2017 Florida Derby to Todd Pletcher. And always dreaming, they won it by four in the end. Anytime you ever would go to see him in his breezes or in his races, you knew that he was the real deal. You really would get excited about what he was going to do for the future. I'm Jacob West, and this season, I'm always dreaming. No sport in the world brings the wins home like racing. It's one of a kind, high speed, high stakes action. And Naira Bets takes you there. Place your bets and watch the races live from anywhere. With Naira Bets, make easy, secure deposits in promotions every day to earn reward points or cash. Download the Naira Bets app or visit NairaBets.com. Sign up now for a $200 new member bonus with promo code LIVE at NairaBets.com.